Yeah, buddies, it's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. And I'm Gail Bennington. Oh, and there's Juliet. Not Bennington, but... Hey, um... <laughs> we're all here with you. This is the only father-daughter radio show in the history of radio. Uh, a little later on, by popular demand, and the popular demand came from our own Chris Stanley, but uh, Chris wants to play a bit uh, from the Philly Comic Con that I did with Big J Okerson. As well as Bam Margera. And coming up in just a couple of minutes, a friend of mine is stopping in. David Stam- Steinberg, not the comedian, the famous uh, famous manager. He's managed you know, golf clubs all the way around. He's managed uh, Robin Williams' career and produced the stuff, uh, the new... Um, I don't have it in front of me, but there's a HBO uh, documentary. Inside my mind. No, Chris, I'm on the air right now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and the word is mouth, <laughs> not mine. You look like an idiot right now. Ew. Um, this should be a professional show. But he's been the uh, he's been the manager for a lot of people. Um, and it looks like maybe mine. So Ooh. let me just play this out. If that happens, I could be, as he told me, the new Peter Sellers. No, uh, obviously I don't need a manager. My career is just sailing along underneath the radar where I've always liked it to be. I like, uh, I consider uh, um, the last thing you want to do is get attention. Keep and it quiet, I like Then to everybody's say. looking at you. Everybody's looking at you, and you look like a sham, a shy ham. It's nothing you want to deal with. Yeah, come on over. She'll explain it to yeah. you. <laughs> Juliet knows. Come here, Juju. Do me a favor, Gail. Yeah. And take her outside when I'm talking with David Steinberg. <laughs> I will. I definitely will take her outside. But I can this. have one of the greatest managers in the history of this business. You're a baby voice. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, some sort of a baby voice? Go ahead. Yeah. She's a good kid, though, huh? She is. She's a good kid. Vito's a good kid. Thank you. Uh, You're a good baby, too. Is that Vito talking? Happy. Do we need to have more, like, toys and slides and play pens here? <laughs> slides. <laughs> She's a little small for a slide, but yeah. I didn't mean for her. <laughs> Oh, for us, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We love the slide. <laughs> when I, uh, I remember when I was in school, and uh, the teacher, I was supposed to be, you know, cast into the not allowed out during recess, and I went down the sliding board. The teacher said, "Where were you?" And I said, "I was." I said, "I, I just slid." <laughs> She goes, well, you know what? You're learning fucking past tense. So, okay. You're out of trouble now. <laughs> so, uh, that's coming up in a couple moments. Is uh, Are we still doing tickets for the New York Comedy Festival yes, panel? Yes, we are. It's the last day. That's the t- panel happening tomorrow, no- November 10th at 2 p.m. at the Sirius XM Studios. Ron's, ho- Ron's hosting the panel. That's offensive. Can comedy survive the new sensitivity? On the panel, Big J. Okerson, Ari Shafir, Lisa Traeger, and Yamanika Saunders. Go to theinterrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. I uh, have real feelings about this. I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm like, if society's changing, it's changing. It very rarely gets yanked back the other way. And it normally, let's say the, the people who get offended by stuff, they're not your guys' generation. They're the people younger than you. Yeah. And they grew up in a more sensitive time. You know, when I was younger, nobody's would you wouldn't tell someone that their cigarettes stunk. You know what I mean? Uh, everyone smoked and it took years and years and years. And they started with first graders and said, smoking is bad. And kids used to come home and tell their, their parents, smoking's bad. You shouldn't smoke. And everyone thought that was obnoxious, but it got to that point. Well, um, if you think about it in terms of any other art form, right? Like 
their music changes, taste in music changes, and you can't say like, "Hey, we have this kind of a band. Why aren't why aren't you guys still enjoying uh, grunge music at the same rate we are we used to?" Uh, it really is. I mean, that is really even an odder thing um, that that you brought up there because I'm a rock and roll guy. It's not my decision. Jazz does not move me the same way. Hip hop does not move me the same way. Right. You know what I mean? And people go, would you really listen to hip hop? I feel like I have. It's not built for me. Right. You could get mad at me or I could get mad at you, but I am preferably 70s, 60s and 70s rock it comes to me easier. 80s, yes. 90s, yes. Then we get past 2000. Not so much. Yeah. It's hard for me even to find a new rock band. Yeah. It, I mean, that is really weird that you are very much of your time and comedy is going to be the same way. And so, not I to be like, don't know, though. I don't know. You because don't think so? comedy, you can listen to an 18 year old and you can listen to a 70 year old. Who knows? Right. If you find it funny, you find it funny. But comedy doesn't age the same way. You it, see what I mean? It like, ages worse. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So so comedy um, from the 1950s, you're not going to be laughing the way an audience that was recorded at that very show would laugh. No, I would agree with that. But a person who recorded in the 60s, yeah, like Robert Klein, could walk out in front of an audience tonight and get laughs. Right. True. And it's very weird. I mean, there's not another art form that does that. So, um, well, I guess I should be settling most of this tomorrow doing the thing, but I am. <laughs> Look, I'm not on the panel. I, I, I shouldn't have a say in this. Well, can I tell you? <laughs> I find it endlessly fascinating because both the things that you said were true, even though they're, you know, somewhat opposed to each other. Yeah. That an old guy can walk out and get laughs or an older woman. Like, like um, um, to me, Joan Rivers never stopped being funny. Yeah. I would make didn't. the case Joan Rivers was funnier a week before she died than at the what would consider her commercial peak. I don't even think it was close. I think yeah. that's how better she had gotten. Mm. But I would have been interested to see if people could relax and let her do her yeah. stuff without being too offended. Yeah, particularly now because even even more so, like the her level of humor yeah. with audiences today would have been. By the way, I um, I did this thing. Uh, I brought it up earlier in the week with Jerry Seinfeld and Ricky Gervais. Uh, I was calling it the 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 father, son, and the Holy Ghost of comedy. <laughs> um, no one else was saying that. <laughs> uh, but Ricky says to him, now you have said that you wouldn't play colleges. And Jerry starts to yell like, no, I've never said, why does that get repeated? And now by you. <laughs> and it's really, he, and he explained what he actually, but it goes to show how one of those quotes can follow you anywhere. All right, we're going to... Uh, be talking to uh well a guy that i kind of feel like i became ended up becoming buddies with i love to hear his robin williams stories but he is um there was so many different people in the business of comedy as a manager and we're talking about people like uh billy crystal peter sellers uh and of course robin williams which to me was one of the most I, I, you know, obviously that was one of the big icons of my lifetime, but, um, go and check out this, uh, special, uh, can I, do I have a plug for it, Chris? Yes, you do. This Play is out. the box set. Okay, great. Uh, the box set is, um, Robin Williams comic genius. This is 22 different DVDs. Uh, involved in this Robin Williams dot com and then of course you can go to HBO Go and all that. Uh, this is not the comedian David Steinberg, but the famous manager David Steinberg. All right, thank you for having me back. Always, David Steinberg is in studio with us. Uh, 
Robin Williams Creative Genius, the 22 disc box set is available at robinwilliams.com. And of course, Robin Williams Come Inside My Mind, available on HBO Go and HBO Now. Great to see you again, buddy. Hey, thanks. It's great to be back. You know, uh, when this thing came out, it was almost mind blowing how much material you guys put together on this. Well, we, and, and we've, We've got a lot more. Yeah, is from, that right? Yeah, we got a lot more from uh, a lot more European stuff. We have um, just a lot more television. Robin did so much television. So much so television and with ease. It's always seemed like it was with ease to me. And no actual preparation other than that Mixmaster brain of his that right. was always, you know, always funneling information and always thinking of a new take on it. But, you know, going through this for you, when you look back at it, you look at it from a different perspective from the rest of us, right? It's like it'd be like family movies. You know, that's a, I never thought of it that way, but that's kind of what it is. And when I'm looking at whatever he's doing, I'm thinking about what was going on backstage and what was going on in the ride over and what the conversation about just different topics and you never knew how much was going on in his head because he could be talking about something and thinking about something else. And, and he, he read everything. So did he have a quiet time before he went out on stage though? Was there always? Yeah. And immediately after he almost went into, um, but like a Zen state, mm -hmm. you know, where he would just get inside his head and We'd have a discussion before that, and then he would process whatever he processed and think, God, that Steinberg's stupid. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, what, right. Whatever. Yeah. Or, I mean, and there are times when I really wanted him to do stuff, and he would tank it on stage on purpose just right. to prove I was wrong. <laughs> but but he had no fear. Yeah. He had no fear of failure. But it's always interesting. There's always somewhat of a contrarian mind to a comedian that they have to come at something from a different point of view. Well, certainly in Robin's case, it, it was. And, but Robin always came uh, from an honest place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what do I know? I wasn't inside his head. Right. But he always came, I think, and that's what people loved. He always came from an honest place and had no fear. Robin was... I think the first rock and roll comedian. Right. And by that, I mean a lot of comics take more of a middle road where it's safe, adventurous, but safe. Robin used to be uh, that guy that used to bounce off the outer edges of the universe. Sure. And he would fail, uh, but he would always come back. Uh, there's only one time I never saw him come back, and I don't know if we talked about this last time when we were in England. Mm -hmm. And I had wanted him, he was going to do a Prince's Trust or a Royal Command performance, one or the other. And he did uh, four or five of those. And I thought it'd be a good idea if he'd work in some clubs just to get, you know, the meter right, you mm -hmm. know, and, and to get his rhythms right and find out what would hit uh, uh, home with some of the, you know, some of the audience. So they booked a place for us out in Windsor, uh, out where, where the Queen's Castle was. And we thought, I'd asked for comedy clubs, mm -hmm. you know, little comedy clubs so Robin could really get feedback and roll with what the audience was doing. So anyway, we go into this place and it looked like Caesar's Palace in the <laughs> middle of a pasture. <laughs> But it had that same feel. It was a, like a 1,200-seater um, down like an amphitheater with a stage down. And Lenny Henry was the uh, uh, the headliner, uh, who was a friend of Robin's. Mm -hmm. So Robin put together what he thought, just some thoughts that he wanted to talk about. And we actually made a list, um, you know, of, you know, in order or something. And Robin went backstage to see Lenny, and I sat up in the crowd uh, in my booth, like Caesars. <laughs> and I'm sitting up there, and all of a sudden, the waitress comes back and says, Mr. Williams would like uh, uh, the notes. I said, tell Mr. Williams he has the notes. <laughs> A minute later, she comes back. Mr. Williams says, you have the notes. Tell Mr. Williams he's wrong. 
I don't have the notes. He has them. Back and forth another time or two, and Robin gets on the stage, and he had no idea. I'd never seen him tongue-tied before. it. Never. And maybe that's because he generally would have an opening remark, but yeah. not trying to work to 12 minutes or eight yeah. minutes, whatever the set Just was to. Just to feel the room for that second. Where and to see they? what worked and what didn't yeah. work as a progression. So he could then shuffle the deck, which he always did. Yeah. Anyway, so he gets on the stage and he did what he's never done. Uh, so uh, uh, where are you from? Because <laughs> he had no idea yeah. what what uh, to start talking about. And he just died a horrible death. A horrible death. It was one of the funniest rot. And then he must have done two minutes and said, uh, okay, good night. <laughs> He's totally yeah. lost. And we laughed like crazy. I said, wow, congratulations. Yeah. We drove an hour, hour and a half and learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I bet he didn't have even too many of those experiences, even as an open micer when he was young, right? I mean, he was pretty quick to become a... Uh, because uh, he was always uh, he was always uh, uh, working out of desperation, trying to find that next thing. He didn't necessarily have it written down. Never had it written down, but it, he would go off of the audience's reaction, you know, and he would go off of whatever popped through his head, throwing it, get a reaction, and then see which way to turn, left or right. Mm -hmm. He was just, Robin was always playing the game. That's why I think a lot of the rock and roll um uh, musicians so gravitated to him because he would say whatever came into his uh into his head we went to see my wife and i brian uh yesterday went to see uh bohemian rhapsody right and i was thinking about robin so much of the time some of you know the way freddie mercury thought he was just he knew he how great he was and he relied upon his own instincts much the same as Robin and I, seeing those crowds and seeing how irreverent Freddie was and how irreverent Robin was. You know, it was, although Robin wasn't a nasty person like Freddie was at times. Yeah, sure. You know, you know, that's where they went separate ways, but it was about the flying by the seat of your pants thing. That And that for you had to be so exciting, right? I mean, every night had to be a crazy exciting night. Yeah, every well, it was always fun, and it was fun after the shows because when in the early years, uh, Robin would, um, after we'd finish a concert for, you know, five, six, eight thousand people, he and I would go out to comedy clubs, and he'd do two hours for free, and that's where he got off. He yeah. just loved that spark of excitement, and uh, I would. I would simply say he loved being Robin Williams. Yeah, it had to be a lot of fun, right? It, it always looked, it always looked amazingly fun. Now you worked with a lot of comedians, yeah, in your life, right? Yeah. Is there anyone that ever reminded you of Robin, or he no. was just that unique? He was that unique. Now I worked with, um, uh, I well, I still work with Billy Crystal, who I think has that spark of genius that Robin had. But Billy works more at um, uh, at a framework of what he's going to do. He crafts it. Robin spit it out. Yeah. Robin had uh, no filter, and he used to. Now that's not to say Billy doesn't uh, fly by the seat of his pants a mm -hmm. lot of time, but he generally knows the area he's going to go in. And crafts it. Billy is a much better crafter, sure, than and, Robin was. And Billy has the this really in, incredible connection to everybody. Like people feel like they probably know Billy, or he they understand that thing that he's saying at the exact moment that he's saying it. Well, he studies it, and, yeah. and Billy knows. Um, Billy's a better student of who sure. people are. And and works to that, but Billy loves going to the edges. Well, I, what always amuses me is, um, I mean, I've represented Robert Klein, Marty Mull, uh, 
a host of a host of people uh, really i think great comedians sure <laughs> what's always fun is when you go into a restaurant and someone comes up to whoever that uh, comic is that's having dinner uh, i hate to bother you in mid forkful <laughs> but you know yeah. could you could you talk to uh, uh, my wife on the phone she's in cleveland or could you do this? and then they try to be funny or funnier than the comic sure. and i've always wondered what was going on in their head did they think that that comedian was going to say jesus you're the funniest dentist I've ever seen. <laughs> right. I don't want, why don't you come on the bus with us? That's exactly right. Why don't you be my friend? Maybe we can have breakfast together. What are they thinking? I, I think it's one of the few art forms that for the, the fan, it's like a dialogue and not a monologue. They are with that comedian going back and forth. Uh, where you don't feel like you could have ever approached Freddie Mercury. That would have been insane. <laughs> but Robert Klein, it felt like a guy that you could be on a car trip with. Because because they're trying, not trying to be. Great comedians uh, know what it is the audience is about, and they flow with that. A right. singer does his set. Yeah. Comics, great comics, have to work. Now, the, Rodney was a great comic. Sure. But Rodney knew every word he was going to say. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so he goes counter to that. Other other great comedians did, but uh, George Carlin wrote everything down, you know, and like a play. His yes. stuff was just written out like a play. And I think he's as good a comic as ever lived. Ever lived. <laughs> ever lived. Yeah. But that's the that's the strange thing about your career, David, is that you've been with all these people, and no one on the outside understands what management really is or does, right? I, that's correct. Yeah. That's, and a lot of us don't. Yeah. But if you had to summarize it, I think what we need to do, what we do best, is create a space that's both creative and large enough so they can go as wide a path as they want without interference. And some people will want to go, uh, 30 degrees mm -hmm. in either direction. Other comics will want to do a 180. You know what I mean? Sure. Bouncing, bouncing out there wider. But our job is to create that creative space so they're not bothered by other assholes like me. Right, right. Because that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing that has to be deflected all yeah. the time. Everything on the outside of that space it's yeah, yeah it's yeah exactly you got to keep those intrusions out of it so that's a free operating zone for them while making sure that you know they're still trying to achieve something when when robin became a television star and then a movie star um our job was to try to bring as many choices to robin as he could, and once that choice was made, to create that safe space for him to create, to fulfill whatever, yeah, you know, that thing he had in his head, that vision he had in his head, and also to, uh, I guess, protect him from just some of their a, a comedian's urges because they're out trying to live everything there is in life. Some of those things not so good. Robin had more urges than most people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when when Robin became a, a big star on Mork. Yeah. He was living in Topanga Canyon at the time uh, with Valerie. <laughs> and Robin was a minimum of two hours late <laughs> to work every day of the yeah. week. A minimum of two hours. And when he got in, only a part of him arrived <laughs> because he was so, so, so uh, trashed from the night before. <laughs> so management took uh, control here and got him an apartment across the street in the same <laughs> building as Mae West on Rossmore, where uh, across the street uh, from Paramount. We thought this was the answer to everything. Yeah. And it was. He was only an hour late. <laughs> but he was still an hour late because yeah. he, he was always pushing the limits. How far could he go? How much 
He was Henry VIII. Mm. Robin had a full banquet table of life yeah. every day of the week. And uh, he never got full. And the amazing thing is, um, even later in life, in his career, I th- uh, the, the movie that he did with uh, Bobcat, World's uh, Greatest Dad, I think yeah. is one of the best performances I've ever seen anyone do. And that thing is crazy. I mean, that is so on the edge from beginning to end. Robert insisted on doing that movie. And not everyone was in favor of sure. that. It was such a small movie, and Bobcat is such a specific director. And Robin, there's no way Robin wasn't going to do the movie. And Robin's the one who suggested the nude scene. The diving scene, yeah. Yeah, and, and Bob said, are you sure you want to do that? And Rob's fuck. Yeah, I want to do that. You know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Right. And that's that is the total freeing up of the character to do that. And he said, "I'm doing it." He and Bob could believe it, but it just uh, it's amazing because I think of him as a stand up first and foremost, and then a comedic actor. But there are a number of dramatic roles that are just unbelievable robin always wanted to do everything he wanted to do more we used to get calls from studios and saying yeah robin uh, was at this party last night with director x and he said yeah i'm just doing the movie we didn't know anything about it and then there are times we'd you know get back to reality with <laughs> <laughs> is this really the right thing? But, you know, Robin never wanted to turn anything down. He didn't. Robin had, wanted to have the longest list right. of things to do, which is why he would uh, go from a concert to a comedy club or a uh, uh, television show to another guesting. He just wanted to taste everything at the table. And again, that was part of your job to... Help protect him because you can't taste everything at the table. Yeah, exactly. You get yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah. uh, we brought up Billy Crystal. He and Billy were so close and um, did some amazing stuff together as well. The, the comic relief stuff yeah. that they did um, was just genius. <laughs> a lot of people had a problem being on stage with Rod- Robin because he was so powerful that he commanded the whole stage. Billy was the, really, to my knowledge, the only lion tamer that really could work with Robin and not lose focus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not disappear. Whenever they're together, if you watch it closely, Billy's driving the train. Yeah. Robin really respected Billy's uh, sense of humor, his sense of adventure, and his control over a situation. So, I mean... Well, Billy, has a, Billy has a broadcaster's mind. He really does. He sees the whole show. And not a lot of comedians can do that. That's why Billy was, uh, I think, the best host of the Oscars they ever had. And he was a fantastic a uh, Grammy host. Yeah. Oh, he was terrific at everything he went out and did. And again, because he made it look so damn easy. That's why I always thought that he, yeah. uh, you know, could have been one of the guys that followed Carson, that that seemed like a natural. Well, that's, we actually explored that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were days away from uh, Billy doing his own, uh, his own late night show at Fox, actually. And what happens? Uh, you know what? It was too much of a structured commitment for Billy to have to work 48 weeks a year. And Billy always drives whatever train he's on. Yeah. <laughs> he's a great creative partner because he's uh, such a visionary. So, but he never says to someone, okay, you do it and I'll show up the day of the show. That's not how he works. And that's exactly how Robin used to work. Robin didn't want to have to think about anything. That's why Robin could never direct. Yeah. Robin could never produce. 
he was. It would have been eight hour movies. <laughs> <laughs> the eight hour movies with no end. <laughs> the first continuous movie. Wow, it's um, it's such a, a a stunning career. When you get to hear all these stories, did you realize it when all this stuff was happening? You were a young man and you went to L.A. and fell into this. Did you think, oh, this is quite a unique life? I just don't feel absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I never thought I had a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was, sure, in every day there's something you don't feel like doing. There's some jerk you have to talk to. There's some some situation you have to um, uh, sort out. But it's it's all so interesting. I just, uh, working with Billy and Robin for 40, 45 years, I'm the luckiest guy sure. who ever, ever lived. I mean. How many people do you think are even on the planet that could understand, like, what you do? Is there. Is there I'm the only one. You're the only one. That, I'm the only yeah. one. No one else gets it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone else who got it is dead. <laughs> Socrates, gone. <laughs> who do you get together with and, and go over some of these stories, though, when you have a chance? I know you're good friends with George Slaughter, and is there other folks like that? Well, there are, you know, other people, uh, and one story begets another. Right. You know, and so someone will be talking about an experience, and that'll spark something in my head. Like, right now, I don't even, if you ask me to list the stories, I couldn't. They all come out of something. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They're all the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. Oh, yeah. Um, I did that. Um. I mean, it, it makes me think of the first time we were in England, and Robin did a uh, command performance for the Queen. And they, the only thing they told him, because it was the BBC, the only thing is, you must never make eye contact with the Queen. You can do anything else you want, because we can always edit it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... <laughs> The very first thing, Robin gets on the stage, and she was up stage left in a box. He goes down on one knee and <laughs> salutes the queen, you know, like he was being knighted. Yeah. The place went batshit. And I'm sure Robin had no idea what was going to happen. It's just something. Sure. He had to do it. I don't even think he knew he was doing it. He was willed to do it. By... And it's kind of the Garden of Eden story. We're like, just not this tree. Yeah. Everything <laughs> else is fine. It's all yours. Stay away from this <laughs> tree and then drawn to it, drawn yeah. to do it. But that's how he was uh, wherever wherever it is that he went. And <clears throat> he was also so moved by so many things. We were Afga in Afghanistan and he was doing a show. And right in the middle of the show, war goes on. The routine goes on. It was time, and they played taps when they lowered the flag. Robin stopped his show, went through the whole ceremony, and it was so emotional and so beautiful. But he really danced to his own drummer sure you know and uh whatever went in there affected him and he reacted to it unlike working through he never ignored things yeah never ignored stuff i mean one of the shows uh, there were thousands of soldiers and there was a bunch of guys standing on tanks smoking and Robin, and he commented on it. He said, no, fuck, that's brave. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's people in a fuel dump flick, flipping cigarettes. But, you know, it it happened. So he talked about it. He went it. with it. Yeah. Uh, Robin Williams comic genius, the 22 disc box set available at robinwilliams.com. Also, Robin Williams, uh, Come Inside My Mind, available now on HBO Go and HBO Now. Um, I know of uh, 
a couple of churches very close to where we are right now, where Robin would come in on, you know, the secret meetings and just come in and work with people and take over those meetings. And they're kind of very famous inside that program. But it just always seems stunning to me that he could walk in and do what would be an hour special on something that a big part of the world would never even hear about or know that those things exist. Robin, throughout all the years that I was with him, um, there were a hundred occasions where he would go. There was a, a particularly heinous crime in California performed uh, by just a beast of a guy and a young girl. And uh, she was killed. And we knew that her father, her father had made it very clear that Robin was a particular hero of his. And Robin, unannounced, would leave, his, leave the city and go visit her. When he was in a different city, he would go to visit hospitals. And the only thing that we insisted on, that Robin insisted on, it all came from Robin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All the good came from him. Uh, that there was no press. That when we went to Afghanistan, those were all private cameras. We we wouldn't allow anything. He didn't want this for uh, any kind of publicity value or anything like that. Like a lot of the guys who do it, mm -hmm. you know, Kid Rock goes goes to visit the troops a lot. Toby Keith yeah. a lot. Um, I'm sure there's a whole bunch that I'm forgetting that I I don't know about. Um, but that thing that. Um that empathy that he had and that sensitivity he had, I bet that was something you had to protect too, because he could let the sad things in pretty easy. But when he let the sad things in, it ended up at a good place mm. because it means he was feeling. Robin always uh, felt what was going on around the world in particularly in all situations, in all situations. And I, I don't think, I, I, I never consciously blocked any of that out because it took Robin to a place where he could try to heal whatever it is. He could say whatever he could say to be honest about it, to let people know about it, or chose not to. You know, but to shield him from that stuff, we had to shield him from too many other things, try to. I mean, at one time, we hired somebody in the early Mork years because he was so nuts. And again, you know, being Henry VIII, you know, he wanted everything. He was Tom Jones. He wanted everything on the table. <laughs> and we actually hired guys to trail him, to follow him around, to protect him. You know, if they saw something particularly uh, uh, dangerous going on uh, or Robin getting a little bit too hammered or out of control, just to keep him safe. And we told him, the guys that we hired, the security guys that we hired, don't let him see you. He's going to try to lose you. <laughs> That's what he does. That's his game, even yeah. though he's paying you. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to try to lose you. Robin yeah. never cared about money. He never cared about having it or not having it because uh, his fortune was in his head. <laughs> sure, sure. He kept himself so entertained. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, and these guys, maybe fifty percent of the time, would say, ah, "Sorry, we lost him." <laughs> Just don't know where the hell he, he vaporized. Yeah. But, uh, and that was it. It was like trailing a comet, I bet. You know what I mean? It yeah. had to be almost impossible to stick with yeah. him. And of course, in those days, um, I guess we were a little more innocent about what some of those things would end up doing, you know? Uh, but there was a lot more things available then with people thinking, well, it's just, you know, it's just partying. Everything was available. Yeah. And if you were a big enough star and had enough money Everything was available, and there were no cell phones. 
Yes. Right. Cell phones have become the secret police. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that is true, right? Just uh, anybody could take a picture of you at any time. And and I do think that most celebrities are aware of that, and that automatically reels them in, except for some of the actresses getting out of cars. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a tough move. I don't know how they're supposed to pull it off. But, well, they, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the percentage is, yeah. but plenty of them don't. <laughs> so so uh, uh, is there a book in the works for you? I mean, these stories are just so amazing to me, and... You know, I don't think that they should go away with you one day. I think they should be kept for anybody who's interested. You know, I, I know so many private things. Mm -hmm. And I knew the private things. I know the private things. Right. And uh, they're private. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the job you took on very early on, huh? The, yeah, and, is... and the trade-off yeah. for me is I've had an incredible life. And I've still got... As much as I can remember, which right. is a good strong 4%. <laughs> well, the stories are just uh, phenomenal. And I think, you know, we're all going to end up talking about Robin for the rest of our lives. I don't think I that's something so. that's going to go away. I hope so. A lot of people are ordering this box set. Yeah. I mean, more people watched it on HBO than have watched a documentary and... Uh, on a, I don't know what the, everybody's got a statistic to make themselves famous, but yeah. the, like 11 million people or a million people, something like that, watched it the first night. It was a re set a record on HBO. Well, it's really, really a great documentary. And the fact that, you know, the kids are grown and sharing their memories and you see that, yeah. you see that part of Robin that we always wanted to know was there. Um, the world's lucky. Yeah. The world's yeah. lucky and I'm I'm really happy that these two things have happened because uh I think it would be just such a waste of a treasure for them to not share in the treasure of Robin. Yeah. You know, it was pretty great. And the same with Sammy Davis. Sure. Who I worked with her, Peter Sellers. These were such unique geniuses. I didn't know yeah. that you worked with sellers. That's just crazy yeah. to me. That's yeah. crazy to me yeah. that you had that experience. He was spectacular. He was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but he yeah. was he was actually nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he, you know, he he was not a particularly happy man. Yeah, but he could uh, turn it on, right? He could. And again, there was another guy towards the end of his life did one of the greatest roles. Uh, of being there being there is unbelievable i saw just like a year ago and i'm like i it's better than i remembered you know he and uh oh, damn I'm, I'm so embarrassed i forget who directed it uh, jersey kaczynski wrote it right jersey kaczynski uh, and and it's a great director though. yeah peter had uh for years who was it oh the great hal ashby one of the greatest directors peter, of the 70s peter and ashby this is how nuts peter was Okay, uh, he and Ashby chased Jersey Kaczynski from island to island around the world, trying to get Kaczynski to let him make the movie. Kaczynski thought Hollywood was bullshit, and they would never ruin his book. So, my wife and I were on our way to Switzerland with Peter to a Pink Panther mm -hmm. a thing, which was hilarious hilarious sure. and um <laughs> and peter said there's this this book he said that i want to do that i have to do i can do this book and show the world what i can really do and then i can die and i can be fulfilled he said i want you and your wife to stop in london on the way back he said do you have anything you have to get back for i said no Said so. You'll stay with us for a couple of days, and uh, said great. He said you'll read the book. It's a ninety-five page book, and for anyone, yeah, well, anyone can read a ninety-five page book. Mm -hmm. Okay, no pictures, <laughs> no car, no crayons, but it was 
So anyway, we stopped in London, and we both read the book. And we just saw it, it was something that he had to do, and he continued the chase. And, uh, and they got it made, and that was the best movie he ever made. Well, it is uh, phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And this is a guy who's made a lot of great movies. Uh, I was in a discussion about not too long ago whether the, the movie The Party is politically correct or yeah. not. And I'm said, it's still one of my favorite. You know, I know times have changed, but that movie has so many laughs in it that it's unbelievable. Real comedy aficionados love that movie. And you've got to watch it. Really watch it. Um, but he and Blake Edwards. Unbelievable. This was some of the best, uh, some of the best teaming that was ever made. And 90% of the time, they couldn't stand each other. <laughs> Peter, Peter used to yeah. all, because they were both control freaks. Yeah. And Peter used to send me in. I was a press agent. I wasn't. I was being paid six hundred a month, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and he would send me in to talk to Blake Edwards. But Blake I, Edwards couldn't. Uh, you know what? He would sooner not step on an ant <laughs> than step on me. <laughs> That's how much control I had. <laughs> but finding that chemistry, I guess, was also a big part of your job. I mean, like with, uh, you know, Good Morning Vietnam or whatever. That yeah. thing that. You could see how many times that could have went off the track and not worked, you know? Well, the the relationship he had with Barry, mm. which they had up until he died, um, was really special. Billy Crystal has that same relationship with Barry now. Is that right? You know, they they were all very close, close-knit. So, um... um well, Barry was, he, a, was a right like a comedy writer or even in, even he was in a, a stand-up yeah he was in a team right yeah when he, he was younger uh, yeah he, who was the guy uh, uh um the uh, the guy from coach, coach. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's hard to believe right yeah yeah and yeah. and uh and then he wrote um uh he wrote for carol burnett barry's really yeah he's a talent he's really funny and he knew how to ride robin he knew how to play robin he knew how to give robin that space that robin needed all of those um the riffs the microphone riffs yeah. the radio riffs robin and his wife marcia and myself we did those till two or three in the morning each night before he did them the next day on the set that's how fresh they were and then Robin would discard what we had all done and do whatever he wanted. But yeah. I mean, those were not too long ago. I think they're on iTunes. I just went back and just let them and just listen to them as comedy. And it's pretty damn amazing. It's yeah. It's really, really great. That was, that was, that really showed Robin's chops. Yes. And, and like I said, it could have, it could have went off the rail so many times to try to balance the tragedy and heartbreak with that pure comedy. Yeah. My, my, uh, my business partner at the time, Larry Bresner is oh. responsible for finding that, developing that, selling that. He, he got that whole movie together. Robin found it by accident in our office when he came in one day. Just picked it up and. No, he saw it on the board. We were that far along with it. Uh, Larry had put each scene on the board like they do when they make a movie. And Robin came in and says, huh, what's that? Oh, that's a movie we're making. And he said, can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to read it? <laughs> no, I can't imagine it existed, anybody. so he yeah. wanted it. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody else in that role, though. I don't know how you could pull that off. Well, we didn't have anybody else. Nobody else. Nobody we, was being thought of. No. We weren't at that place yet. Uh, we didn't have a director at that time. Barry was brought in very late in the game, and uh, it was uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg who got him. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got a million and a half stories, dude. You really do. 
Yeah, I got it's some. It's really, really wild. I got some good ones. Uh, RobinWilliams.com. And of course, you can go to uh, uh, HBO Go and HBO uh, On Demand for that. It's so great to see you. I'm glad that you stopped by. Thanks. This is so much fun for me. It's great for me. It's yeah. uh, like I'm, I'm queen for a day. <laughs> <laughs> David Steinberg, I'll see you next time, my friend. Thanks. I need my phone book. I don't know what happens in this world, but this phone of mine, mm, it's just always running out. All right, how long before we're back on the air? Oh, we are on the air, <laughs> I don't want to see how the phone plug thing is. Uh, <laughs> good radio. Uh, coming up in a little bit, um, and uh, Chris tells me this is by popular demand, but I refuse to believe it. It's uh, when me and Big J and um, what's the guy's name? Bam Margera. Bam Margera <laughs> were in Philly at the Philly Comic Con. Three best friends. Three best friends. <laughs> one of us drowsy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very, very weird gig. Um, and then Chris, who was there, never, never comes to one of my gigs. I was in Poughkeepsie last week. There's a train that basically runs into the club. It's that close. And I'm, what's that, baby? Yeah. Yes. I know, Chris. What I'm <laughs> saying <laughs> is, Chris... Uh, didn't take the train up, but then I start getting texts from 4.15 on. How's the room? How's the room? How's the draw? Why are you curious, Chris? I should have just went. I would No, you should have just went if Jay was there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like, you know, because both masters. I he ser serves two masters, Gail. <laughs> I serve but one master. Jay. Ron Bennington. <laughs> that's it. False. <laughs> false what? That's never the end of a something. False. <laughs> That's a false. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. So this is a very uh, strange show, but uh, of course Chrissy feels like he's a little behind on his Thanksgiving uh, plans, which I'm just going to make the announcement now. Looks like it's going to be a total disaster. No! no. Don't say that. This year, Thanksgiving is going to get Stan lead. <laughs> I want to turn that. I want Stanley to be a good thing. I want that to not be a negative fucking connotation. <sighs> hey, dude, the oh, baby. How many yeah, times I got to tell on, you? Dude. Apologize. Apologize. To you everyone. know, I don't ask much for her. <laughs> Just that you accommodate my baby at work every day. <laughs> is that too much? I, I, it should not be, no. I mean, it that's radio, much. dude. Every radio show has a baby in here that you have to watch your mouth around. Where's her pack and play? God damn it. Look, Chris, I mean, uh, Earl keeps making beautiful faces at the baby. He loves her, and he's good with babies. Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> if he, she was yawning. I don't know if he would, uh, I don't know if there's a male version of uh, Mammy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or was the term Sammy? Oh, do you wear those glasses every day? Uh, yeah, they're mainly for distance. When did you start wearing glasses? Uh, a while. Uh, at least 10 years? Really? Just off and on. I think it takes your threatening image away. <laughs> I like you looking like Scary Earl. But I'd never punch him. I see those True. glasses and I go, I can't possibly. Is that right? We still don't punch people with glasses because... I f they could shatter. Isn't that the idea? They I don't shatter, know if right? they, they shatter anymore. I mean, I don't think most of us would be putting... Scary glass this close to our eyes. <laughs> Holy shit, has anyone ever come up with a nice jagged glasses? That could be the name of us. I have a friend who has a glass company called, uh, I think it's something Bunny. Hoppy bunny, bunny Eyes. Bunny Eyes. Yes. Uh, bunny Eyes. And she owes me a favor <laughs> or two. <laughs> Because I once paid for a male prostitute <laughs> for oh her God. birthday. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. Oh, page six. Hey, do you know my uh, new thing that I call Jenny Hut? What's that? Jenny Hut, 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 <laughs> Hut, Hut. <laughs> it's really uh, funny, but she's always around girls, so no one gets the, the laugh. <laughs> I'm so glad to be around you fellas in this tomboy in her child. <laughs> 
little icebox? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, if that baby was icebox. What was the name of that movie? Little, little Giants? Yeah. Which is a ridiculous name, let's face it. <laughs> It's a nutty name. How can someone be a little giant? <laughs> but Icebox was one of the great actresses of our time. Yeah, I loved Icebox. I found her very relatable right. when can I was I, a youngster. Yeah. And it was a nickname that you also called me up. Yeah, that I movie. did. I called her Icebox after that movie. It was not too feminine at that age. <laughs> um, yeah, you were woke before most people, I yeah. would say. And it wasn't like you were a thuggish girl. You were just like a sweet little boy. (laughs) Like a sensitive little boy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like I had the personality of a gay boy. Yeah. (laughs) That's why it really was 100% true. (laughs) And I remember saying to your mom when you started school, I'm worried that the other boys are going to tease him. Because <laughs> he's, he's not as rough and tumble. And that's why I'm so excited to have a chance to do over with this baby. <laughs> we're going to get this one right. You know, Earl, we're all adjusting here. I'm, I'm telling Chris to stop it with the fuck bombs that he's throwing around. But you've got to stop with the funny faces and look, show her your baby. Oh, I'm going to give her so much hope. Yeah. <laughs> So much excitement. <laughs> that baby. It's not only brought joy to our family, but brought joy to this show. Everybody but Chris. Yeah. Who's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I'm just having fun staring at the baby. <laughs> but I don't want to make too long eye contact because I don't know how babies feel about long eye contact. They love it. Oh, okay. It's intense eye contact is like a thing that they learn. Okay. So like, I'll just uh-huh, keep doing let's that. just stare into each other's eyes. The the thing that I'm trying to figure out, because she's too young to crawl, mm-hmm. but why does she try to crawl all the time? It's not learned behavior because none of us are crawling. So right. why is she like, oh, I want to crawl? It's like, really how would strange. she know? It's, yeah. it's, is it instinct the way... Uh, a falcon or a tadpole would have? She's no better than a falcon, that's for sure. Not an Atlanta falcon. <laughs> but yeah, she does this thing where it's not crawling, but she's like inchworming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And she's wanting to crawl really bad and she's raging because she can't. Yeah, because she's just three months old. But so at some level, she knows movement is in her future. Right, exactly. She has the drive. She doesn't know what it is, but she's like, I need to get something. Maybe I need to put together a paper on this to finally get my doctorate. (laughs) (laughs) I had no idea that babies didn't just go crawling out the womb. What? What are you fucking I thought babies just like day, maybe six, that they were... How idiotic are you? I just thought they just went for it. You've never been around a baby in your life? No, I don't, not really. But you're a human being. You've... I've never been around a baby. I've been around like two babies, and this is number two. I'm going <laughs> to... Don't call the baby number Sorry. Two. Thank you, Chris. That's For rude. once, I agree with you. <laughs> He's learning. Look, I'm going to show you this bi- this picture, which if you remember, yeah. I tweeted out, does this baby look like it can crawl to you? I don't know. I just thought Look baby- at that baby. I just I, I thought it was just a natural instinct that all babies just started to crawl. Like, uh, do, uh, do you think uh, a baby and a slug are the same thing? I guess. I guess. Maybe I, you're thinking baby snake. <laughs> He's thinking like that pregnant giraffe that just like plopped out the baby giraffe, and ten minutes later it was walking. Here's the grossest. Babies don't do that. Here's the grossest crawl I've ever seen in my life. I'm kind of sick about it. The baby kangaroo. Have you ever seen that? No. No. All right. So the baby kangaroos are born. Too early, right? Oh. They're born like feti. And then they crawl from the kangaroo's vagina into the pouch where they stay in there and yeah. grow up. But I don't know what they do for food in there. Is the kangaroo um, squirt milk down in the pouch? I think that there are nipples in the pouch, but how could they I had no idea. What? Now Pouch-nipples? I'm as dumb as Vito. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's pouch nipples. That's the name of my new band. <laughs> and no one will book us. <laughs> which side? The, the, what do you mean, like which a, side? The, this part or this part? Nothing's going to no, be on the outside. No, it's going to be on the belly part. The pouch. How could it be, par- how could it be done? <laughs> you think the nipples would be on the outer pouch? Let me ask you this. Do your, are your nipples on the outside of your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Well, yeah, good. Let me see. Yeah. 
We got that dummy. <laughs> we made that dummy feel bad about himself. Good. I'm going to teach you about how to gang up on the weird kid. <laughs> <laughs> you could never learn too young. <laughs> Put him in the crosshairs and take him down. Looked like somebody's had an Italian education. <laughs> <laughs> Don't teach her that. <laughs> it's true, though. What do you think? The babies crawl straight to a cannoli? <laughs> I mean, if you put a cannoli out there. <laughs> are, you, you. are you confused between a baby and an organ grinder's monkey? <laughs> 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 he sees that. He's like that. This organ grinder sure has a nice baby. <laughs> Vito, what? There's no way that you could live in New York City and be as country as you are. <laughs> you are straight country. I just, Hillbilly. I, yeah. just, I don't deal with what I don't deal with. You're a fucking slack jawed mouth breather. <laughs> but not even like Southern Hillbilly, like Appalachian. Sure. Like, <laughs> like some. No way with like XXX jug. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what he drinks out of, his XXX jug. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't never had any idea that there was such a thing as shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes a bath in a bucket in the front yard. <laughs> That's you. And then he's always yelling to his mom, the revenuers are coming. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, sometimes I feel like you, you, you're the type of person to take an alligator to the prom. <laughs> That's how fucking <laughs> to the swamp you are. <laughs> So, anyway, we're going to play this thing in a little bit. Yes, in about uh, 15, 20 minutes. <sighs> well, I like hanging around with Jay. That's always nice. Big Jay. What is it, baby? You excited about Jay? What do you yeah. want to say about Jay? It's a shame about Jay. She loved his special. I wonder who doesn't. <laughs> What was the name of that? All of them together, they were the, the degenerates. degenerates. Yeah, yeah. The, if I'd want to be presented in that way, I think they thought about Degeneration X, oh, and they were I would like, love "Wait a that. second, I would love that." Those youngsters are changing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of crazy kids. Yeah. In the meantime, two of them were like forty when they started. <laughs> it. <laughs> I got a little bit of the odds today. Oh no! Are we got any odds pills? We should. In the office. We'll Vito, you know what I that means. Don't worry about it, <laughs> That's Vito. your language. <laughs> Vito, you don't have to get on your mule and go down. Out of the it's not far <laughs> enough for a mule. <laughs> or your Italian version of the mule, the gondola. <laughs> I saw him with a gondola going down the East River. <laughs> Earl, is it always great for black people that there's such a thing of Italians? <laughs> I, I can't get mad about that because it would be really yep. offensive to get mad about there's it. There's no but. good way to do that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I'd rather the baby doesn't find out about racism so yeah. much. <laughs> she doesn't see color. Yeah. No, she actually can't see color yet. Is that true? No, that's actually the first like month I think they start to get. I didn't know that yeah. you couldn't see color for a while, honey. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that Vito's been locking eyes with you. <laughs> I, was just, I, I was told that locking eyes is a good thing for babies, so now I'm trying to do it as much as possible. Why don't you lock eyes with Earl for a while, and then the <laughs> two of you can make out. <laughs> okay. Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you put on a, a, a wig and pretend that you're the girlfriend? <laughs> the other one, make sure that you're coming back from war. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I told I would return to you. <laughs> She's a good baby, though, isn't she? I mean, could there be a better baby? No. Uh, I'm just worried that my baby, Chris Stanley, is going to feel Aww. like left out. I'm trying to avoid eye contact. Are you really vaping in front of a baby? Oh, my I, God. I, it's vapor. No. Yes, it's vapor. And two, she can learn that bad habit. Oh, God. I thought the vapor was safe, but I didn't think about the habits and stuff. The vapor was safe? Yeah. Like the, the vapor isn't safe. You're spewing some kind of chemical out. <laughs> You know what they said that vape juice is made out of? What? Cancer cells. Oh, what? Oh no. my God. Chris, Please. you're done for. I was told this was better than cigarettes. Better? Nobody said, even the vape companies don't say it's better than cigarettes. 
They just have an outlawed it inside. <laughs> Although I think uh, they don't like it here, right? Yeah, they don't like it here. And a lot of bars, they'll, be, they'll, they'll tell you not to do it inside. You know, my biggest problem is when he comes outside to vape. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you look like an idiot out here. There's a sign uh, downstairs in front of our building saying no smoking or vaping. So they had to make new signs. For you. Then they have uh, an ashtray there. <laughs> I know. No one says that you can't smoke there. That's the smoking area. No, there's a sign in like the pit area. Like there's a sign that says no What's smoking. What's the pit area? We're like that Metro Cafe. That's where we all mosh. Post work mosh. That's not in front of the building. That's the basement. <laughs> You're fucking the general admission area. Do you hear how stupid Aunt Chris is? <laughs> He's a dummy. Ooh, what a face she has, huh? I know. It's the face that makes her so cute. It's like the yes. whole head of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the little feet. And what kind of shoes are they? Those are the only kind of shoes that you would not be able to walk in. Yeah. These are <laughs> these are mostly for warmth. There's not even anything. No tread. I wonder if any restaurant would say, I'm sorry, she's not dressed properly. <laughs> we say hard shoes. <laughs> I went into a uh, a place one time, and it was a cigar bar. And we were not permitted inside because of Fez's childish-looking sneakers. <laughs> not Oz. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So I can't imagine he took that well. No, he was pissed, <laughs> right? So then we're with right-wing uh, Tommy Z. And Tommy Z's like, he really wanted to smoke cigars, and this was a cigar place. And he's like, well, okay, buddy, we'll see you. And I go, first of all, I'm not fucking going into this place without everybody that we came for. Fuck the... You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not... If you're gonna tell me one of my guys isn't fucking good enough for your place. I know. Then we're out. You're not gonna be like that girl outside the club who's like, sorry, boo. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. As That's you, how like, he was because he wanted to outside. smoke a, a Macanudo. <laughs> and then he goes, well, you live close. Why don't you go to... Why don't uh, you guys go get a pair of your shoes? And I go, I'm not putting him in my fucking hard <laughs> shoes. I might as well be putting him in my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> no, shoes is not something you can share. And I've known Fez so long, and before he had any other problems, sweaty feet was, <laughs> and I mean stank foot. So I could not have those socks <laughs> in my fucking shoes and feel like I could ever put them on again. <laughs> I mean, most people don't know this, but I've been with him in many quiet places, and you just hear him when he's walking, squish. 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 <laughs> we would go, be going places, and he'd be like, can I stop and wring out my socks? <laughs> what a good baby, huh? Yes, you're a good baby. She loved that story. Well, Pop has a lot of stories for you as time goes on. I'm going to tell you how once I was a voiceover artist on the Flintstones. <laughs> I played the part of Pebbles. <laughs> Did she just say that? Oh, my God. Joe, was that you, baby? <laughs> I'd like to right now have a spelling test against Vito. At, at, at the very least, it'll be a tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a draw. Yeah. Earl, you're very quiet today. I oh, just like, yeah. hi, baby. Yes, I'm having fun <laughs> yeah. with the baby. Yes, I understand, but we are on the radio. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> We're at work, girl. Okay. Gail's okay, holding the baby. I'm less distracted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. No, I love kids. What do I do? Oh, love babies. <laughs> oh, just save that and put that aside in case we need Where, to that later. Where's her monkey? She's uh she's got that in her bag. That's my it's favorite. Really, my thing. bag. I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> that's her bag, and everything I own is hers now. That idiot forgot her bag. <laughs> Where's Pop at? There he is. There he is. Uh, this is the same thing I got to do with uh, Chris every day. Just <laughs> let him ask him over and over who I am. <laughs> it's helpful to me. You, you want to see him light up? Have Big J walk in here. <laughs> Chris will go running him over to him and then pull his shirt up. Is that your master? Yeah. I have but one master, and that is Ron Bennington. Really? Yes. Then why did you take the, the goddamn SARS bus all the way to Philly? <laughs> For you, Ron. <laughs> Name another gig of mine you've ever come to. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense, 
rest, even though I'm not the defense. <laughs> I'm the prosecutor in this case. Your Honor, I was mistaken about what my role was. <laughs> Please don't hold that against. <laughs> I like that you just yes and yourself. Mm-hmm, I do that. <laughs> I improv with myself. My mom used to get so mad about that. Uh, 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 what is... Um, I forgot his name again. Bam Margera. What's Bam Margera up to? Uh, he has, um, he's making music now as of, as of right Good now. for him. Yeah. Because I don't want him falling off of roofs or whatever they were doing before, hitting each other <laughs> mm-hmm. with the Shopping pack bats. Shopping Yeah. <laughs> No, a lot of it had to do with shopping carts. Oh, yeah, a ton of them. I think he has one of those cameo pages, too, where you pay What's people that? to send you a video of, of themselves. Like, oh. you, you like, pay them, like, 50 bucks. Sexual? No, 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 just, like, they're, like, talking to you. They're just like, hey, like, if you ordered one, it'd be like, hey, Gail, what's up? It's Bam Margera, your buddy. How's everything? Have a well, good birthday. How much is this going to set me back? It's, it, Why don't it's they a, just FaceTime? It's a, it's, it's a video message. They don't do live, because then, you know, you would have to, like, keep talking to them. Yeah, but put a clock on it. Just like you're in a cab. That's the cameo's just in the business of. Look, I'm trying to tell you how we can make money oh. when we can <laughs> fucking blow cameo out of the thing. Like you could talk to celebrities and you could just watch the price go up all the time. You got to give them a credit card. Well, that's the best thing when you're pitching something. Is like you guys know cameo, right? It's like that, but live. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, cameo. Yeah, she loves cameo. <laughs> Who do you want a cameo from? Probably some little cartoon animal. <laughs> what shows is she watching right now? Um, you know, she doesn't have shows of her own. She just really enjoys what I'm watching. Whatever is light and sound flashing in front of her. Well, she should be watching C-SPAN. She would love it. <laughs> you should be watching the Fred Rogers show. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to love him. He's the best. You're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to put on a dead man for you. <laughs> Does that scare you? <laughs> I wonder if she has any memories of the last life. I sometimes feel like she does. Mm. Like she does this thing that's very peculiar to me, where she looks at her left hand specifically like this, like puts it out in front of her and stares at it. And I always think that she's thinking, where's my ring? It just looks like she's like staring at her hand like she was missing something. Hold on, Chris got a text and it took over everything. All right, two things could have happened. She could be going, what happened to my wedding ring? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, my last life, my hand was cut off. Oh, no. What did you do? (laughs) Hmm. What does everybody think she did in the last life? Stole bread. (laughs) What? Oh, this is about the hand cut off thing. I thought we were saying, how'd she lose the hand? I thought she was a butcher. (laughs) Oh, my God, this is all hand related? (laughs) Yeah. Earl, what do you think she did? I think she was a singer and was doing a diva move. with. Uh, How did she lose her hand? (laughs) I guess meat grinder? She was a butcher? (laughs) Charlie tells me you're a bitchin'. You know not to steal bread now, don't you, yeah, baby? Yeah, you learned you your lesson. You can't steal that bread. You can't be a little bread thief. <laughs> and what kind of court would chop the <laughs> hand off a baby for stealing some stale bread? <laughs> you run right back again. Remember, I just won that case against Chris Stanley, the man who serves two masters. I serve but one. Not according to the court of law. Damn it. <laughs> what a baby I think the show's become so much nicer That we have a baby hanging around So gentle yeah. and calming And it helps us talk down to the audience now <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> huh? No you don't Do you, you know that we're going to break? <laughs> you get that now don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's Bennington The show for and buy babies. <laughs> go ahead and put the Bennington show on your radio and go out for a couple hours. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on the little rug rat. I hate I bet she hates being called the RR word. <laughs> That's just as bad as some others I've heard. Yeah. Right, Earl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Earl's yep. In. Yeah. Yeah. 
None of you guys teach her the N-word, and that goes for you too, Earl. Seriously. I, I loathe that well, I mean, word. if you're singing rap. <laughs> Don't even say I, it in front I, of her. Use it in zero context. They repeat. I, they I, repeat. Yeah, they do repeat. I want that to be your first word. <laughs> <laughs> Me, though. Why would you jinx it like I'm that? Sorry. I'm terrified. I wouldn't even think an Italian would say this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even comfortable with the initial. Mm-mm. There's the guy who owns Mediate. Just walk by. Dan Abrams. He does a show here now. Oh, nice. That's yeah, cool. lots changed yeah. since you've been gone, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> like, for instance, Dan Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm able to pick this up. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. You know, it's not that big of an adjustment for me. <laughs> I understand you're confused right now. So much is happening. <laughs> Do, do, do. All right. Why don't we do this? Uh, we'll take a break, and I'll bounce the baby. And when we get back, Chris? We'll be playing your appearance at the Philly Comic Con with Big J. Okerson and Bam Margera. As you can understand, all the comic book fans were so excited <laughs> to see the three of us. <laughs> uh, you guys got any new comic books coming out? <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> we don't write them or read them. <laughs> uh, right back, Bennington. We'll be right back. This is Faction Talk 103, the Bennington Show. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer today. Over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their home. Ring knows home security begins at the front door but it doesn't end there so now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the ring floodlight cam just like ring's amazing doorbell floodlight cam is a motion activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with hd video and two-way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property See and speak to visitors, even set off an alarm right from your phone with Ring Floodlight Cam. When things go bump in the night, you'll immediately know what it is. Whether you're home or away, the Ring Floodlight Cam lets you keep an eye on your home from anywhere. Ring Floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you get go to ring.com slash comedy, ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Faction Talk 103, it's the Bennington Show! What's going on, Philadelphia? You guys all right? Crackle, crackle. That's your... Uh... That's the thing from the show. Yeah. From the... <laughs> <laughs> crackle, crackle, guys. Fucking, uh... Wow. Yes. How are you? Uh, listen, we're going to do the Beetle Bailey lookalike contest in just a couple moments. <laughs> That's the last time I read a comic. If I want to be totally honest with you, Jay. <laughs> Beetle Bailey? It goes back a ways. There was Jughead and Beetle Bailey, and then I was out. <laughs> but uh, That's uh, comic strips. You never got into the comic book world. I had no idea that it came in a book. This is very exciting. <laughs> I, know the, I know they have movies out. I haven't caught any yet. <laughs> you thought you had to always just eat gum if you wanted to read comics? Yes. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say like, hey, excuse me, I didn't get the stick of gum I was looking for <laughs> with this comic. Now, uh, my favorite, uh, you know, there's Black Panther. Mm -hmm. and that's all I know. I just that's know very, that yeah. I saw that came out. That's very politically correct. Yeah, it was, uh... wait, is Bam already sitting here? Bam, you shouldn't have to sit down there like that. <laughs> I like pointing out Black Panther to gain uh, favor with, if I'm counting correctly, two black people in the room. So yes. They both went like this. Fuck yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. They were like, I black got Panther, here and I was a little weirded out, but once I heard Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ronnie B is woke. They yeah. do that shit. I, I, I have a snooze alarm. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm <laughs> woke for a second, and then I go back and say Orientals. For no apparent reason. <laughs> I can't keep up. Progress goes too fast. That's what I'm saying to you. I think it's okay in Philly to say that. You want to go out for Oriental food tonight? Yeah. I, 
And don't worry, there's no Asians here. They're actually at the convention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, uh, that's the kind of cosplay I like. The Asian cosplay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cosplay, then some puke porn. <laughs> Wait, what's this one? Puke porn? Yeah. You never heard of that? Come on. I told you the last thing I saw was Beetle Bailey. Can I explain <laughs> that to you? I'm not up to date. So puke porn, should I just guess? They, they, they bang and puke? I don't even know if it gets to banging. It's just, just mostly puking? puke stuff. Anybody into that at all here tonight? Well, Shit. no one just says they're into puke porn. Oh, yeah, porn. you know yeah. what? That's no a, one's screen name in the puke, puke yeah. porn forums is ever like John Smith. <laughs> from t- <laughs> All right, good. I see a but kitty, a lot of people in here, by statistics, a, little, a lot of people here are into puke porn. There's a kitty cat right there, a little kitty cat. That's the best cop. You're a play bad kitty. Is that her, is it your boyfriend with you? He, he's not dressed up as anything. No. You know what's funny? He should dress up like a sad, old, fat lady, and that's his cat. <laughs> He'd just be like, can I get some water for her? <laughs> I don't understand. There's supposed to be water. Are <laughs> so you going to charge me for a cup of ice? <laughs> I, uh, that's cool. She's into it. You're not. Yeah, not really. No. That's so cool. I would well, be totally into it if I was you. This would be a, a 365 thing. We'd be playing around the house. <laughs> she would be, just peg her with yarn. Yeah. Go yeah. take a shit. A bad kitty. <laughs> Got to get mad for a scratch in the couch. By the, by the way, am I the only one into hamster play, or is that an old, uh, <laughs> is that as dated as Beetle Bailey? Ron, you're so old school. Yeah, I really am. Hamster you know? play. I like this crowd. The biggest rise we got was when they announced the uh, world champion Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. They, you know. I didn't think that was going to get a big pop at Comic-Con. <laughs> There's a bunch of fucking nerds like, I don't care for sports. Yeah. It's stupid. I, no, bunch I, of big animals hitting each other. Yeah. Uh, can I get out of gym class? <laughs> but no, you can't help it. The energy was here in the city. I went to the home opener uh, last week. Anybody else go? One guy. One guy. <laughs> He's not that proud of it. He Houston. wanted to go, but they don't let kitty cats into the stadium. Yeah, yeah. He's not leaving her in the car. <laughs> they told him to curb his pet. Yeah. He said, fuck you, I'm leaving. You guys over there, you're really staying in those seats? Yeah. <laughs> they want to stretch out, man. It's like, this is the United States, and you guys are Hawaii over there. sad. They need room for their skateboards. They need BAM to sign. <laughs> Ben, will you sign this? <laughs> hey, Bam, is this cool? Yeah. I hate to be that guy, but... Bam, look at me. I can do a 120. Come on, Bam. <laughs> um, when I went to that... You went to the game, you said, sir, yeah? Were you there for the whole thing? From the get-go? When they started off... and Bron- I don't think I'm a, a hyper-emotional guy, but when I went and Brian Dawkins started talking... And he started going, yeah, he's like, Philadelphia, what's up? And then they show a highlight reel of the Super Bowl. It's amazing at 40 years old how, for some reason, what strikes me as sad and emotional is like, look at these guys just working together to accomplish a goal. I go, it's really something else, man. They really figured it out and did something big. And I got almost teary in front of my daughter, which felt gay. You almost cried? Aw. Almost cried. I had this like thing. at your grandmother's funeral. I'm not gonna go, man. I did I'm the fucking same hold thing. On. <laughs> I did the same thing. Uh, I went to the first game of the Sixers playoffs uh, last season, and they play a little video of these guys working hard. Would you get emotional at that too? Yeah. Nice. Do you uh, do you guys have a sport you don't cry at, like pussies? Is there one sport? <laughs> You're at a boxing match. You just you can't believe these guys. <laughs> fucking going for it. They give their all. <laughs> That's what I felt when Lewis, uh, when Lewis fought. I got emotional for him. When Lewis J. Gomez, my friend, did an MMA match recently. And it was fucking awesome. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did. Uh, I call him a one-punch Lewis. Because <laughs> yeah. um, he only has one punch. 
But he killed. The overhand. Yeah, it was amazing. It was it great. Was absolutely. I could never do that. I don't, this you is may probably, have to. I moved out of Philly about 17 years ago, so I haven't been in a fight in a long time. <laughs> But Before still, that, you used to fight every day, though. Not every day, but <laughs> way more. <laughs> yeah. It's a fighty town. That guy's been in a fight recently, the Eagles guy, right? When's the last fist fight you were in? Not counting your wife. Hey, he's 1-0. and <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you, buddy. Sometimes you only got to be if they learn, you know? Yeah. That's true. One good fight and the rest of your marriage is fantastic. <laughs> Fucking retire. <laughs> I'm just noticing this, and I think it's great. Mark Marin is here tonight. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> I just feel like from sitting here, everybody looks like somebody else. Comic Con, so much fun. It's the idea. And only one costume, and it's a girl next to her reluctant boyfriend. Hey, does anybody got a fentanyl patch? I'm starting to get a little. <laughs> Wow, that didn't get a laugh like everyone here yeah. is fighting a problem with fentanyl. You People, see these ladies were going through their purses. I think I have one. I thought they were more like, that's not cool, man. You know I'm trying to stay away from that shit. <laughs> you know I just got my nursing assistant job back. <laughs> to assist a nurse, that's, uh, that's some exciting work. Is anybody here from not Philly at all who came in for Comic-Con? No shit, where'd you come from? D. Washington, D.C. Okay, I thought it was another D.C. D.C., Washington, D.C. I thought it was District of Carolina. Uh, good luck with that storm. <laughs> you came as a family from D.C.? For Comic-Con? For this uh, moment? Oh, I bet your daughter's furious. <laughs> There's a what? You made her come see this over a Drake concert? We couldn't convince half of what would fill this room to do that. Oh, that's the problem with the crowd, Ron. We're competing with Drake. Yeah. <laughs> We're less than Drake. It's kind of a mashup. Not one less than Jake person here tonight. Back here. All right. Scott. I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry, Miss Drake. How old are you? Oh, oh, the nightmare. <laughs> you yes, do hear. That's, that's what happens when you're listening. Yeah, so that's we're like white would... drakes to you. Yeah. If you look at it that way, it won't be so soul-crushing to have to share a room with your folks later. <laughs> 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 Wonder why they keep going in the bathroom a bunch at the same time. <laughs> they're not fucking. They're doing coke. <laughs> it's Keystone Comic Con. So you're 14, huh, honey? So glad we didn't bring Anthony Cumia. So glad. So. True story. Woo, dodged a bullet. Dodged another bullet. <laughs> His ankle brace would have started beeping. <laughs> I thought it was time for a vitamin. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Is it my insulin shot or is there a child nearby? <laughs> See, Mike, are you staying in Philly tonight? What are you doing tomorrow here? Jay? Just like I'm trying to handle the daughter? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You guys need a babysitter? You guys have your vacation. You like listening to Jerry Lee Lewis music? Is... <laughs> so when you're 14, you into puke porn by any chance? Because... <laughs> I'm just starting to notice that not one reference I have is under 70 years old. <laughs> I'm gonna, within five minutes, I'm going to bring up Lincoln. That's how far back I go. I haven't been this hard since I went to the bathroom at a Bobby Darren concert. Bobby Darren concert. <laughs> All the chug bites <laughs> with those teeth, dear. Yeah. We're losing them all. Yeah, we have every right to. <laughs> Is it all, I feel like it's so much couples. Well, not these two dudes. Yeah. But besides they're, that. They're hardcore Comic-Con guys. Do you, do you feel like when couples come to Comic Con, it's always got to be one cares more than the other? Yeah, like one's Kitty Cat. One's got to not give a shit at all whatsoever. Like the cat thing is obvious. Right. What if she came for him and she's like, yeah, it actually sucks. There's a saucers of milk convention happening where we live. And I had to fucking miss it for this bullshit. And so my. <laughs> Dude, if we put down a saucer and she just starts to quietly come over. Like, not trusting us, and finally, 
It would be the most exciting Comic-Con I've ever been to. <laughs> How into cosplay are you? How deep do you go with the cat character? You know how deep they go. How yeah. deep does it go? Do you fuck like cats? Like when All he puts right. his dick in, do barbs All shoot right, out, Jay. and he can't get it out until he finishes? All right, Jay, you don't have to work blue. <laughs> that was National Geographic blue, okay, though. Yeah, that's true. Anytime you're watching National Geographic and there's a cat on there... That's an old one. You're going back a ways. <laughs> it's, going, it's going a ways back. It's in you, black and white. You don't, what do you, do you are you in school? Do you, go, do you work? I got a record. Like a cat? Yeah. <laughs> do you just live in the library and teach yourself at night? <laughs> <laughs> That's just our library cat. Yeah. She's crazy. That's how you fucking scam college. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I'm just a library cat. I'll meow. I used to date a woman, make her dress up like a squid. It was weird, <laughs> but we liked it. <laughs> yeah, you good. Yeah, put your head down so no one can see over you. <laughs> there he goes. He's doing absolutely great. Yeah. I'm so curious about this. We only have one cosplay person. I'm so curious about that life. Well, we got Mark Marin and young Ben Margera. It's all... It's so true. Boring. The three bad kids that hang outside the Simpsons school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a goth in here yeah. somewhere. You know, I saw him earlier and he was smoking. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. <laughs> Did he roll them back up in his T-shirt when he was yeah. done? James Dean. Get back to working on his moped. Well, it's official. We put one person to sleep. Good. I knew it was going to happen eventually. Well, no, it, not even no, you no. behind you. The, a woman actively squatted down to take a nap. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I'm a hypnotist. So <laughs> this can happen occasionally. Did you say her magic word? Yes. The word that gets her? Yeah. Cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to kill the president. I must I've kill seen. the president. Do you have a long day? Is that why you're dozing off, darling? Or is it fentanyl? <laughs> it's got to be at the root of something. How many people here came here just for Comic-Con? <sighs> so, just the one black guy. That was the only person. Thank you for hanging out, dude. Since you're the only person who's actually gone to Comic-Con here, as we sit here at Comic-Con, what's been the best part, dude? Yeah. Yeah, you're the black you're guy. You're the only person that says they've gone to Comic Con. Yeah, you're the black guy. See, this hypnosis thing is unbelievable. <laughs> What's that? The last five minutes. Have been the best part? You didn't get to high five the guy that did the voice for the third version of the Joker? <laughs> hey, Deb, go out in the hall to see our guest. He's in the hall. Thanks. Ooh, in the hall is our guest. There you go. Um, it's really yell, great. Nobody yell Christine too? Christine Hall! <laughs> what the fuck? Can't get a bitch in a hall these she's, days. Is she pretending she's on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> what? Finish. How have I heard your laugh 17 times and I can't hear your yell? Oh. Well. Oh, I thought I saw him. Oh, wait a minute. Is that con- another guy that looks like him? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it was him. Christine was lying. Jay, do something about this. <laughs> looks Hang like on. you run There's a, a woman pretty coming loose in to tackle fucking, somebody. Looks like you run a little fucking bit of a loose uh, game here, Jay. I swear to God, my yeah. pimp pan I thought was stronger. Yeah, well, look, maybe. I'm just milling around the, around the aisles like I didn't say haul. Look, maybe if you didn't cry at every sporting event, <laughs> she'd respect you a little more. She has had to watch me cry at men a lot. <laughs> These guys have tried so hard. He was uh, crying at a backyard cornhole game just earlier <laughs> this afternoon. How did that become a craze? What's that? Cornhole. Cornhole? What? Yeah, it's like a big, they're playing it in the fucking, it's like a children's game, but now it's in all the bars. Oh, is that the Wait a minute, you know what puke porn bag? is? Yeah. You know what puke porn is, but you don't know backyard games. I didn't know it was called cornhole. I thought that's what you call... Well, I'm sorry to be blue, Ron, but butt fucking, quite honestly. I didn't take that as blue, Jay. I thought, uh, 
I thought you were well reserved doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Butt fucking. Yeah. I thought that's what cornhole was. I would have called that beanbag game. <laughs> no, that's when you play with each other's balls, Jay. <laughs> I told you I left this town a long time ago. <laughs> My backyard gay fodder isn't what it used to be. Wait, you had a gay fodder? How about your mother? What was she? Uh... <laughs> we literally just went to the Catskills with that bit, folks. Hello, That's how much Mata. we care. And are trying... Hello, fodder. Hello, fodder. Christine, you come with news? Break. Cool. That was that signal, everybody. Christine. She breaks. Paul! <laughs> yeah, but you know. All ass. Can you, That's like, what he's telling you. Can you put a little pep in it and make it look like I fucking control something? <laughs> look at her. Look at the fear. <laughs> I, uh, look at the fear in her soul as she walks away. <laughs> Is that right? Is that what you're... F- That's not what I'm getting at yeah. all. <laughs> she came down for the Wawa. Um... <laughs> We will. We'll take our first break here, and we're going to bring out our guest. I know everyone's excited. I know those dudes are excited. I know you're excited to find out he hasn't been here the whole time, Ron. Yeah. Secret. <laughs> hey, everyone, it's a secret. Uh, you look know who got excited. They miss Drake now. They're okay with it now. Hey, Remember? Call me on your cell phone. <laughs> the only, thank you very much. It's the, literally the only Drake song I know. And uh, he's big, right? Drake is as big as you can get these days. I think he's pretty big, yeah. As big as you can get as a Canadian. Well, what about Journey? Are they still making things happen out there? Are they still believing? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll take our first break. We'll come back with our guest. Yes. Uh, Ronnie B. We're at the Keystone Comic Con. Shit's getting real. We'll be right back. Yeah, we're back. Keystone Comic Con. What is up? You guys still feeling okay out there? Oh, one more person just wandered in. We're building. We're building. It's happening. <laughs> Big Jay Hilkerson, Ron Bennington. We are joined now by our guest, everybody. What intro does he need, especially in this fucking town? How about it for Bam Margera, everybody? Bam Margera. Check, check. I think... Oh, now I can hear myself. Okay. <laughs> Um, dude, it's great to meet you. This is my first time meeting you. I've, I've become friendly with Steve O over the years from stand up comedy. Yeah. But uh, he's the only one of the gang I've uh, got to meet, and I'm such a fan of everything you guys do, man. It's fucking uh, amazing. So, yeah, cool, he, cool uh, to meet you. which maybe five years he's been sober, maybe even longer, but um, he was so hell like. <laughs> Before? <laughs> yeah. God, like any drug that you had in your pocket, he would just do. And. When he was in New York City, he emptied out his ATM and started, he goes, people who think they're rich walk on roses, well, I walk on money. And he just started <laughs> throwing money all over New York City and all these, like, not even bums, like, real people were picking up. <laughs> yeah. Real actual people? <laughs> yeah. Real people in New York are bums. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think I would lean down if somebody was throwing money on the ground. I'll, I'll go get him one else. And that's up. when I was like, this dude's bonkers and like his you know when like you're totally on something you're, you're yeah. like working on your jaw and shit yeah. like <laughs> I was like you need help <laughs> but that wasn't the day <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah you know he said he told the story before it was like a big intervention you guys did for him which was cool shit no he was off his rod the first time I ever met Steve-O was at the comedy cellar in New York and he came and it was like uh, I was so excited to meet him I don't know if I actually even met him because he was ripping his shirt a bunch and then went on stage and was weird for a while yeah, yeah. like not funny it was like he like laid on the piano and did a bunch <laughs> of, and i got to ask him years later i'm like yeah you came down to this club once i met you i think briefly he was like i don't remember i was on lsd pretty hard that night <laughs> that was a pretty good impression man yeah i'm working on him <laughs> yeah. i uh <laughs> i'm working on my impressions more hey man although every impression i do covers like five people you know, it's pretty funny, though. Dave England decided to get all wasted once, and when he gets wasted, he turns into a person named Darf, we call him. And, uh, you know, it costs $5 million to make a jackass movie, and then it usually makes, like, $100 million. But um, he decided to jump off the podium as a lady was in the middle of saying, like, random people get hurt filming jackass. And I'm trying to say, we only hurt our friends. Well, he jumps off... 
<laughs> podium. She she falls like medium. Like she didn't get hurt one bit, but she got four million dollars from that. Jesus. Oh, tell and me the place like, and the time. That, I'll that was of, the cost of the movie, you know? God damn. I'll take a Preston Lacey body splash for fucking $4 million. I'll crowd surf that son of a bitch myself if I have to. What's the most hurt you ever got making? One of the, like, the mo- I mean, it looked like the, the dick farm on your butt. <laughs> well, that, insane. that was painful, but um, is what happened was, you know, they... Branded the dick on my ass, which was like, I kept jumping, so now I have a hologram dick. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, eight, eight of them. But <laughs> I decided to wear the same pants for 10 days straight, which gave me a fucking staph infection. And that hurt worse than the actual brand. It was, I was like screaming at my mom to take me to the hospital. And uh, it, was, it was bad news. It was so Pussy and infected. Do you have to talk to an agent that you're uh, wearing the same pants for 10 days and Steve O's walking on money? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys were equal parts pretty big in those films. I, uh... <laughs> That's what was so strange about like the first time I went to rehab, which I was like forced to go to. And, um, you know, I'm listening to the lady give the speech and she's trying to tell me that uh, <laughs> she's like, there's nothing good that could come from alcohol. Everything bad happened. I'm like, tell that to the threesome I had last night. Tell that to me doing all this. Anytime I do any jackass stunts, you know, I usually like will do a shot at crime. Back then, you know, like and it would make it would give me like beer muscles <laughs> so it's actually fueled three super successful films in a tv show yeah so tell that to the two lamborghinis in my driveway bitch <laughs> that's probably not the speech they were looking for at that meeting <laughs> bam you know th- <laughs> would you like to speak yeah it's, you're this not exactly to... bottom amount when you have two Lamborghinis in the driveway. You know what I mean? That's not your bottom yet. You <laughs> yeah. know, you got to go for a while after that. And Even that's, that's, that's what was so hard. Like, how do you, you know, you could tell when friends hit rock bottom. Like, my best friend Novak, he, his rock bottom <laughs> was everybody, like, just, he kept calling everybody up, and he was, he was on heroin. Everybody knew this, and his mom was the last person to let him in his house. And uh, he shit his mom's couch on Mother's Day with a needle in his arm, tried to claim he had food poisoning, but he forgot that the needle was still in his arm. So, like, oh, I shit your couch, Mom. Oh, sorry, it's Mother's Day. I must have had food poisoning. Well, the needle is still in your... It's from that. <laughs> <laughs> Then he got kicked out of her house, and that's when he hit rock bottom. That was rock bottom. I actually met Novak not two to a couple years ago, and uh, he seemed like a good guy. I think he had it together at, the point, at that point. Well, he, once again, he's four years sober now, and it's insane yeah, yeah. because, like, he was probably worse than Steve-O, but, um, I mean, the stories that, that he has so, <laughs> like... <laughs> We're at the Baltimore Orioles Stadium, and there's this big concert happening, and he's kicking game to some girl. And uh, he goes, you know what? Let's just find a discreet location to go fuck. And she's like, all right, let's go do that. His idea of a a discreet location was the nosebleed section of the bleachers. The whole stadium could just look like this and see this so now the security guard sees it and he's like you better knock that off right now he's like dude shut the fuck up i'm gonna come in 10 seconds <laughs> and then as soon as he grabs him he's like you know he pulls him off and comes all over his arm <laughs> and he's like i told you motherfucker in 10 seconds <laughs> that is not rock bottom no that's a good lower. Tuesday. That's a fun Tuesday right See, there. If you could still come, no, it's not rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, man. That's a big thing about trying to be able to come in front of all those people and being yelled at by security. And like on He's tour, focused, if nothing else. On, <laughs> on tour, you know, I walk into the tour bus and he's humming like this bleach blonde, red haired midget, and he has a pizza on her back as he's watching an iPhone porn of a hot chick. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm looking at a hot girl. <laughs> I'm like, then 
the, once he's done, he's like, damn, I really regret doing that. And then the next day, she shows up to the next concert, and he's like, gets drunk again. He's like, fuck it, round two. <laughs> Goes for it again. He fucked a midget with a pizza on her back? Yeah. That was a small pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Just a slice. It's personal pan. It was one of those personal pans you get at the and, stadium. And she, and she couldn't finish it. It was... Uh... <laughs> oh, wait. Let's fill these guys in for everything they missed. Uh, a guy jizzed all over uh, somebody. Security. At the stadium. Another guy had a needle in his arm and shit on his mother's <laughs> couch. I think, you're, I think you're up to date now. And then uh, fuck the midget pizza. <laughs> and then dot, 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 now. <laughs> yeah, he was a pretty... Even in the movies when Novak would be in, he would do some uh, pretty fucking wild shit. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the time of all that stuff, there's probably so much fun stuff. I said, especially having to get off alcohol and finding out that alcohol said, fueled so many things you're able to do, uh, which makes sense to a degree. And there's, Novak there's a pretty was... pretty nutty, like... He uh, was really gnarly, like... like you know, Steve-O would be contemplating, like, all right, I'm going to go off this wheelbarrow in a, in a bush off this roof. You know, like, Novak would be like, I would quit looking. I just shut the fuck up and put me up there and throw me off the goddamn thing. Like, like he didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care. <laughs> That's heroin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what heroin does. It, must it works be until it doesn't. That's what I like to say. It must Thank be God I've it. never seen it or like anything. Like I know the end result of of that, sure. and it's like, why would anybody try heroin? Like you waste all your money, and then you start robbing from your best friends until you lose all your friends. Like it just doesn't make sense why people would. Because when you, because if you're willing to do all that, it must be fucking awesome yeah. to do. I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah, you know? me either. <laughs> it, I'll just say this: it's as comfortable as you'll ever be in your whole life. My uncle was, he mows my lawn and he like cleans the pool and stuff. He goes into the pool house recently and he like was fixing some wires and he looks up and he's like, bag of heroin, bag of heroin, bag of, 13 bags of heroin. I'm like, this has to be Novak. He's four years sober now. I call him, I'm like, Novak, remember when you're under my DeLorean, like you were changing the oil and you definitely don't know how to do that and you were looking for something? That's never been said ever before we're, or after. <laughs> is what you were looking for in my pool house? Because he's like, motherfucker, that's where I left all that heroin. <laughs> I'll be over in five. <laughs> I should throw that out for you. <laughs> I actually think now though, because I've, I've, he's been in rehab 16 times and like, you know, this time I really think like if I had a bag of heroin, he, he would just throw it right in the garbage. Like age probably comes into play with a lot of that too. You get to well, his mom too, got down on like her profit. hands and knees after he shit her couch, and she goes, "God, please kill him, cure him, or kill me." And while she was down there, she cleaned the shit off the couch. <laughs> I mean, she was already down there. <laughs> what are you going to let a heroin addict clean her, shit off your couch? You're just going to smear it around. obviously worked because, I mean, now he has root beer and pizza parties on his fucking birthday. That's you know? fucking awesome, though, man. Yeah. That's good to be and, and on like, of that. you know, tea is his new thing. Bam, you got to try this Earl Grey tea with a dash of honey and some peppermint to fucking die for. I'm like, Oxycontin. Tea nut. <laughs> Just drop a couple Oxycontins in there. <laughs> Cures what ails you. Uh, no, that's fucking fantastic, man. You know, everyone's going to, uh, I think at some point, where it's either going to kill you or you're going to just get too old to even be like, what the, you know, there, yeah. there is a time. I know so many people have gone to rehab like 10 times, shit like that, and then finally do eventually get it together. Yeah. I mean, on a much smaller scale, I've quit smoking 46 times. <laughs> and I can't pull it off for some reason. But I'll be back. Don't the, you worry. The best way to quit smoking is heroin. Because uh, <laughs> that, cig that cigarette lasts all weekend long. It really does. <laughs> Same one. You're just like, if there's enough Walking Dead episodes to keep me in the house and heroin, yeah. why would I smoke? <laughs> you know, I, everyone I've ever known who's done heroin also smokes. It's, uh, it, it really goes together nice. I don't know why. Yeah, it's well, what just are you gonna, nice. How else are you going to celebrate after you just wrote an awesome song? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what it does? Ron, you had like a lot of stories with or you know, experience with heroin? Uh, everyone uh, has those stories, don't we, gang? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
you know, I was Let's telling. Let's go around the room. What's your heroin story, miss? I was uh, telling Bam, Don Vito, uh, me and him grew up in the same town, and we used to know each other when we were younger. And when I did my show in Florida, he used to come in and be on the Ron and Ron show all the time. And, but I go all the way back. Literally, Don Vito was in my first wedding. That's, really? That's where my fucking head was at the time. Um, <laughs> and Don for someone, Vito is phenomenal, like, but his diet was... 30 Budweiser's a day, Percocets down his throat. He wouldn't snort Coke, but he would just eat it. He couldn't snort it. Here's why he couldn't snort it, because he used to fucking paint cars and didn't wear the mask. So everything had filled into yeah, his nose. Yeah, at AOK Auto Body, yeah. Yeah. And he How would just, he... like, you would lay out a rail and he'd go like this. Wow. Yeah. He was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> One, one time we were coming back from Atlantic City and we came into Philly and, and we, we were in a, he used to have a van all the time, like a party yeah, van yeah. that would always have a keg in it. And everybody was like sleeping in the van and he, he gets pulled over and everyone is fucking holding and he's drunk as shit. <laughs> and the cop has got his license and has given him shit and a car just comes barreling down the street hits the cop car and keeps going and the fucking cop just throws his license back at him jumps in the car and takes off and we all sat there for five minutes going what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> just happened it was one of the greatest moments of my life that I ever had and I was like I think God wants us to do something <laughs> but later I found out he didn't the other thing about uh, him is that when he was younger, in, in, in fights, and in fist fights, instead of punching, he would just grab... He would choke the shit out of you, yeah. Just grab your windpipe, and that would be it. Like, my dad and him were at an Elvis concert back in, like, 79, and uh, somebody had a problem with him uh, yep. in one row above him, and he just choked the shit out of him yeah. until he, like, got... <laughs> Until he passed out. How Philly is that? Getting to a fist fight at an Elvis concert? <laughs> Two years after Elvis died. <laughs> That's right. It had to be before that. He died three days after I was born, actually. 77. That's fucking crazy. Um, that's a crazy diet for Don Vito to have, considering how heavy he was. It seems like there was other things in that diet, for sure. No. I feel like those things would make you super that's thin. The thing, like, all my... Dad's brothers, he has four of them, and they're all nuts except for Phil. He's the only one who, like, never drank, never... He smoked cigarettes, but, like, he never... Everybody else, complete hell. Like, uh, Kevin, who mows my lawn, he went to the army in Germany. One day, he decides some um, little girl fell into the river, and he dove in at night and saved her. He was, he was on the front cover of the newspaper saying... Your dad? Like, no, my Uncle Kevin, oh. um, saying hero. Next day, um, <laughs> you know when like the sergeant's like, drop down and give me 20 pussy? Like He's like, pussy? Like He beats the guy up. <laughs> yeah. And now he's, he's in court about this, and the judge goes, so you're in here because you called him a pussy and then you beat him up. Well, I'm calling you a pussy right now. What are you going to do about it? He hops over the podium and beats the shit out of him, yeah. and then he gets kicked out of the army. <laughs> <laughs> I like they were all nuts, your dad's brothers, except your dad, who just was a wonderful person, and you showed him that by beating him up in a bathroom constantly. <laughs> Kevin had a, a, a really big reputation, like, as a badass. Yeah. And, like, if I found out even today, if he was mad at me, I'd climb a fucking tree. I really would. Like, my Aunt Boof got hit by a crowbar by somebody in high school and Kevin found out who it was and he was in the bathroom in the middle of punching the shit out of him and flushing his head down the toilet and the principal walks in and he just goes stay the fuck out of this <laughs> yeah. and the principal stayed out of it yeah can I ask you a question did you feel when you were like when you're hanging out in like the Hollywood scene and stuff and being out in LA isn't it, do you feel like you can relate to all these like 
LA pish posh people when you have such Philly stories like that. <laughs> that's why I feel when I go places. I'm like, I feel like I don't blend in anywhere where everyone's wearing suits and gowns and yeah, it's, high fashion. It's really shit. weird, like who I connect with. You know, like I'm really good friends with Jared Leto from 30 Seconds to Mars, and uh, I met Jeremy Piven. He was a poison cocksucker uh <laughs> and i met harvey weinstein he was a poison cocksucker and now i see what's get, getting to him yeah like, ha, that's what you get you fat motherfucker <laughs> I'm, I'm telling what, a, what a scumball you know yeah. like he's married to like this hot ass chick and like every second of every living moment of every living day he's trying to hit on another girl and get a massage or get whatever it's it, Pure scumball. That shows you how good pussy and heroin is, yeah. man. It's just, uh, it motivates. <laughs> like they said, no matter who you marry, there's always another girl you'd like to rape. Uh, <laughs> the Harvey Weinstein story. They're always out there. I, hey, you know what? I got raped by a girl. I know you might think this can't happen, but it can. Oh, I've seen you. me Strap do on. it. You told us on Howard Stern, I think, right? I did the loop for the first time. I was the 13th skater to ever do it in Phoenix, Arizona at the Tony Hawk tour. And uh, once I landed, I was like, I'm getting fucked up tonight. So when I drink whiskey, I, you know, to my closest friends with which was Novak at the time, you know, I'm sitting there telling him how worthless he is and how he doesn't do shit and blah, 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 blah. I fall asleep in my bed. We're sharing a room. Some <laughs> 200 pound Mexican chick knocks on the door and says, is Bam in there? And he just goes, yeah, have at it. <laughs> so I wake up to this chick on me going, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm like, who the fuck are you? What just happened? Get the fuck off me. And then I look at Novak. He's like, that's what you get, motherfucker. <laughs> Did you get the acting part? So or? I guess if you're sleeping, you know, and somebody starts going like that, something might happen. And I woke up to that. I got raped by a girl. But you boned up, though, which was pretty impressive. <laughs> now you see why Trump wants to build that wall, don't you, folks? <laughs> We Keep need those. it. We honestly need it. <laughs> Keep those fat Mexican girl rapists out of here. And then her boyfriend was waiting outside because she thought he was, she was just getting an autograph or something. That's hilarious. You give her an autograph on her back with your jism. It's <laughs> an odd applause break there. That was a uh, really. It's my own, it's my only impression of yeah. Hispanic people is sleepy Mexican. You tell me any Hispanic, any different kind of Hispanic, it's still coming out sleepy Mexican. Uh, every every single time. Uh, I hate to have an opportunity to talk to you like this and not tell you one of my favorite things ever you did on Jackass is heavy metal alarm clock, and I've always wanted to ask you because. It's a sick-ass guitar solo you're playing. Is that guitar laid over that video afterwards, or are you playing that intricate when you're, when you're punching him in the face? Is what happened was I was playing the guitar solo to a hymn song called Razor Blade Kiss, and I guess they couldn't clear the rights to that, so they had a guy come in and look at my fingers and just dub Play over along, that. Yeah. So it turned out a bit different, but... It looks like I was playing it. I was just playing to the song. It was, it was one of the funniest things you've ever... Ron, are you familiar at all with the heavy metal alarm clock? Yes, of course I am, Jay. <laughs> I'm from the United States of America, aren't I? <laughs> you looked a little befuddled when I said it. I wanted to make sure we were on the same page here, man. And uh, also, I know uh, the late fucking great Ryan Dunn was a, uh, your best friend, man. He was so awesome. Yeah, fucking absolutely, man. Ryan Dunn was amazing. I guess the crowd's not fans. But uh, <laughs> what a weird non-reaction to have. The kitten is. <laughs> oh, the kitten got excited? <laughs> um, he was, uh, such, you guys were such an influential thing, especially as me starting out in comedy, when you guys were kind of like hitting your stride with everything how much I looked to that. And as a stand-up comic, it was such a fun thing to watch. I feel the Impractical Jokers has a similar thing. To yeah, and, and like, we would always just feed off of each other, like, perfect energy, you know? And it was like, camaraderie, man. When, camaraderie. when I found that news out, like, I was pretty lost. I didn't know, like, I always had him by my side. Whenever we'd film anything with MTV or any kind of interview, it would always be 
us feeding off each other and then that's just gone, you know, it was, it was hard to deal with. No, absolutely, man. It was. I think the whole show's thing was, that's why I can't be duplicated a bunch of times is, uh, sorry, my baby's here. I, uh, ma- I guess. Ma- is, that, is, this, is this your baby, Becky? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get her to do a little stunt. All right. <laughs> Come on <Uh-oh>. up. <laughs> is that really your baby? Yeah, right there. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> How old now? Nine months. How, how's that for life changing, right? In a good way. It's, you know, yeah. it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, I've never, like, <laughs> changed the diaper yet. She does all the work. Yeah. Why is that fucked up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, you sad I, broads. Deal even... with it. He's a breadwinner. Suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> While you're billing, remember that baby was born in a castle. (laughs) 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 We had to take two Lamborghinis because we couldn't fit all of us in the way to the hospital. And his name is Phoenix Wolf. So Nikki actually goes, it's a pretty weird name. Do you think he might get picked on in school? I'm like, picked on? He's going to be getting dropped off in a fucking purple Lamborghini. He's going to be the man. Yeah. Uncle Kevin will be there to flush someone's head down the toilet. A young phoenix emerges from a fucking Lamborghini. <laughs> he's going to be getting pussy by the time he's 10. <laughs> my, dad me off, my dad dropped me off in a stingray once, but we were both fat. Looked weird. <laughs> the doors opened and we both just fell out onto the curb. You ever watch fat people try to get out of a very low car? It's a several step process. You got to use that steering wheel a lot. <laughs> I'll never understand. <laughs> I'll never understand how cool that is. That's fantastic. your first child? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. man. So, yeah, I mean, you know, enjoy your sleep because that's over. <laughs> so, boy, that's pretty fucking great. Were you worried that you were going to get uh, God's wrath and give you a girl? Well, that's what I was kind of hoping for because I was like, I don't, if it's a boy, I don't know if I want to teach him all my jackass shit knowledge. Like, fucking, is that a good idea? <laughs> you know? jump, jump off this house, you might yeah. make a million dollars. Exactly. That is, I mean, wait, don't, don't, don't say that early. <laughs> don't get that information out just, uh, just right now. Oh, that's amazing, man. My da- yeah, I have a daughter only, so I, you know. It sucks. I, I did a lot of things to deserve to have a daughter, and let's just say my daughter's probably the one that's going to be blowing Phoenix in a Taco Bell parking lot at some point. At some point. After rock bottom. No, no, you guys aren't listening. After rock bottom. She's going to shit on my couch first, and then I won't care who she's blowing at Taco Bell. You know, the, the real uncomfortable thing is your daughter's 14. So uh, she's 50. She's gonna be 16 next week. That's really inappropriate. Then I think there's an age difference we should all worry about. Well, I, there's nothing I could do. She's been getting dropped off at fucking public school in Hyundai Santa Fe's most of her life. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to bring you down, Ron. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It just scared me a little bit. You know, I read the papers. That's all. I just worry about the young people and the cats. <laughs> and the cats. All these young cats in the room right now. Um, Bam, it's been absolutely so cool to fucking meet you, man, yeah. and, 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 and bullshit with you, dude. I hope you come up to New York sometime and hang out with us again. Yeah, for sure. And uh, fucking Bam Marger, everybody. What more can you That's fucking say? Yeah. Thank you for spending some time with us, man. All right, uh, good news. Jay and I were just asked to join a skate gang. So, <laughs> How you doing with that? Is it going good? Yeah. Already going good? Yeah. I, uh, it's so funny meeting, like, for the first time, an adult jackass guy. Yeah. And so, so I got both of them. I got Bam Margera with Steve-O, same thing. A clean and sober Steve-O. When I first worked with Steve-O in D.C., mm-hmm. Washington, D.C., <laughs> um... <laughs> That, see, the parents went to the bathroom together to do coke. See that? Where's mom? Nice. That is back. nice. That's how families stay together. <laughs> but I was working, and uh, he invited me over to his hotel room to hang out to have dinner or something before the show one night, and he was making me uh, 
when I got there, he was tossing a salad, a oh. wooden salad bowl. Oh. Yeah, no, not the way you're hoping. Oh. Legit leafy lettuce salad. Oh. And uh, yeah, it was gross. <laughs> and, uh, and making tofurkey and some kind of other vegan shit. And I started laughing. And he was like, what are you laughing at, buddy? I go, I don't know. I just, when I was younger, if you told me I'd be hanging out with Steve O one day, I thought we'd be like, you know, snorting wasabi off each other's dick holes or something. I didn't... <laughs> but it pins through your tofurkey. nipples. Tofurkey. <laughs> yeah. That was always the thing with everyone's like, those guys were brilliant. I'm like, yeah, but they still stapled their own balls to something. For your entertainment, though. That was yes, for you. Yeah, it was for, for your entertainment. It's the ultimate suffering for your art. I want to tell another uh, Don Vito story, because... This is like one of my fucking favorite stories of all time. We were down at the beach, me, him, and uh, this other guy, his name was Conchester Rocky. Um, <laughs> Cause he lived on the Conchester Highway and worked on the Conchester Highway <laughs> and really liked the movie Rocky. So, that wrote itself. Yeah, we were down there Indian River and, we, and me and Rocky were in the water and we got caught in a fucking riptide, right? So I had never been in a riptide before, so I, like, I went underwater and just was like clawing the fucking sand to get back up. It was the most exhausted I've ever been in my life. So I come out of the water and I'm just like ah, fucking dying. And Don Vito is on the beach screaming and laughing and he's pointing and he's yelling, Ronnie, look, Rocky's drowning, right? <laughs> this is our fucking friend. So he was so happy. And the lifeguard had to go out and get him with like one of those fucking red little th torpedoes that they go around with. And as he was swimming him back in, Vito swims out to them and starts dunking Rocky's head under the water <laughs> with the fucking lifeguard smacking at him. <laughs> I don't know why that gave me so much joy. <laughs> I'm going to tell another story about his Uncle Kevin, too. His Uncle Kevin had uh, stole a badge from a cop and was hanging around in the bathroom of the Tower Theater, just fucking taking kids and throwing them against the wall and taking their dope off of them. And then just using it. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, he had to think, you fucker, all right, I'm going to let you go, but this stays with me. And he was just doing that throughout it and entire Aerosmith show. <laughs> oh, that's probably some good drugs. Yeah. What was the year on that? What's, what was the year on that? Yeah. Hey, dream on, dream on. Oh, okay. Like that's the, the closer. Yeah that, yeah, that was the closer. Yeah, that would have been mid-70s, but now uh, he's, you know, mowing uh, his nephew's lawn. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Mm-hmm. Everything works, works out. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Things work out the way they're going to uh, fucking work out. That was a kick for me. Were you a big fan of the show when it came out? Jackass? Yeah. Yeah, it was fucking hilarious. It really was uh, so ridiculous. And do you forget that he was a highly accomplished skateboarder before that? <laughs> yeah, before that. Well, you know, Gail's first job was in a, a skateboard shop, and nine out of ten kids were buying the fucking BAM thing, uh, over everything else. They like were his just, board? His, his board, yeah. No so shit. So he was making a lot of money off clothing and skateboards and you know not just falling off stuff but <laughs> you know he was an entrepreneur cock slapping a friend or yes whatever. that really is that's why the show was the whitest show ever on television because you're not going to get a bunch of black pranksters to cock slap each other over no. and over again it's just it's very true it's there's never been a, uh, there's never been a black guy who said let's hang brain that doesn't <laughs> happen it's a different community he goes, hey, man, you want to compare dicks? Yeah. Nah. No. They're both big, I'm sure. You know what? We lost her on that hang brain thing. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sure it's happened. It. I'm fucking not woke yet. That's me. You thought you were woke, Ronnie B., but mm. not the case. Shit. Uh, damn it. You think there's a, is there a Black Panther panel happening or something right now? Yeah. That was an awkward moment, wasn't it? Wasn't supposed to be. We were all supposed to laugh at that. She was going to turn around and give me one of these. Like, I get it. Because the thing earlier when we said the Black Panther thing, yeah. instead it just sat in a racist moment. <laughs> That's not going to look good when I'm talking to network. Now, now that she's gone, I feel like I have this great joke I can tell. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> I, I just really hope she had to be somewhere else. That would really make me sad. No, Aww. I think... Millennials. If it makes you feel Aww. any worse, the black guy left a half hour ago, so... No, that actually made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> They're just jokes. Just jokes. I like if you hammer them in succession, though, they do eventually laugh. That's, yeah. that's how Philly this crowd still is when you roll the dice. After a while, they're like, all right, mother, just funny now. Come on. I think what we should do now is have a contest to give away our place cards. Oh, yeah. What kind of contest do we do? I mean, <laughs> this capacity crowd, we don't have enough for a family feud. <laughs> uh, street jokes. Here's what I'm going to do. Give each one of you five minutes with my credit card. How's that sound? <laughs> but you can only order things online. <laughs> yes. And only, it will only be fun for the first three people. <laughs> Then it's a wrap. Should we do some sort of a contest? Were you, uh, were you nervous with Ben? Was there a little bit of uh, starstruckness? Uh, yeah, a little starstruck, but I could get through that. I'm trying to get better at just having people on radio and talking to them in general when they're like famous. I feel like, they, feel like they've stepped down a notch to talk to my mm, That's how I felt coming down here with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was saying, I was getting that vibe from two ends, it felt like there. Both of these guys are like, are we here for you? I'm like, I yeah. thought we were all here together, man. I was like, uh, Jay, we're talking about his uncles now. <laughs> Did you see how happy he was that I, I knew that his dad had been the only person that hit, the, uh, hit a fucking home run off the roof of Chichester High School? Yeah, That's you said the that truth. back there. People don't know that about Phil. He was like a fucking great baseball player. Fantastic. I mean... He's got the build from what I see in that bathroom, so... Still has it. <laughs> so he was like an in-shape guy at one point. No. You don't he have was to just be a great, that... fat baseball player? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, like John Cruck. You don't really... <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't the have Crocker? to be... Yeah. You don't have to be in great shape if you fucking hit it far enough. You know? Where do they put him? Out. Where do they put him in the field? Right field, right? Uh, you know, That's where they always put me. Did they? Yeah, you know, they always say they put the people who aren't very good in right field because it rarely goes there. Yeah. What they don't tell you is because it rarely goes there, when it does, the entire audience focuses on the one fat kid they try to get out of the way. Yeah. As he has so much time to wonder about this moment he's going to blow in front of his family and you shame know? everybody here, and they're going to tease me because we're not going to Pizza Hut either way. You're the only person I've ever heard say the baseball audience. Uh... <laughs> They're looking at a pretty good audience today. Huh? You weren't fans. It was Cub Scout. There was no one there wearing my jersey in the audience. And he's going to burn it when I trade teams to the next Cub Scouts, when I move up to Boy Scouts baseball. Um, were you an athlete growing up? No, I played baseball. <laughs> so no? Yeah, no, not at all. I, I mean, I, I, I played uh, football like that, you know, what was called, I think it was called the Burt Bell League, but it was basically the fucking Little League version. And I remember they would be way more intense, like, you have to give 110%. And I remember saying, as like a kid, I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got a lot on my mind right now. I can't fucking commit. I could probably commit like 20, 23% during games only. <laughs> Practices, I'm going to be fucking around a lot. I'm going to, you know what I mean? Like, I could not get into, oh, we lost, so I feel bad. Never. 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 In any competitive, like, pickup games or anything? Yeah, I mean, I would play everything, but I did not fucking feel bad if we lost the stupid fucking game. And in the same way, academically, if I failed the test, I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to feel bad about myself. Oh, I was the opposite. I was like, throw something at the gate and kick something. Yeah. Well, I think the difference Say, is... if they're going to keep fouling me, it's because they cheat. Well, this is the difference. My parents love me. Yeah. So... That may have been it. Were they present, too? Yeah. Did you have everything? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Were they also present and encouraging and to your artistic side? Sure. I don't have that giant daddy hole that you have in your chest. Yeah. Yeah. Gary. Gary hole. That's what it should be called, the Gary hole. But 
You see that you could tell Bam's parents loved him, so oh, he's yeah. very, you know, comfortable in life. You think so when I lost the game, I'd fucking throw something in the gate and be like, This is why he left. Yeah. I can't win at anything. Uh, Chris Stanley has that kind of uh snap temper if something doesn't work out. Is Chris around? Is he here? He's in the booth. There's Chris Stanley, everybody. You wanna Chris, is it possible for you to come down or I thought that was Bam Margera. Almost. <laughs> Everyone's Bam Margera. Um, two years. Yeah. Here he comes. Yeah. Come on down. Three You're strides and a pull up the pants. Oh, dude. If you would have broad jumped onto the stage, that would have been sick. Why do you think you needed an extra mic? You didn't want to use Bam's mic? You could have done this from back there. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out here tonight. <laughs> we'll be talking about this storm in North Carolina, and then I'll take a few questions. Um, Chris? Yes, Ron? You uh, also, your dad, uh, you had some rough patches, right? Oh, yes, very much so. He liked the booze, mm -hmm. and he liked the dope, and he liked the gambling, and he liked the racism. <laughs> <laughs> I like you did that for, our, that last uh, for the deaf me. members. <laughs> I was all with him until that last. Oh, man. I never got a Ferrari later in life, Bam. <laughs> <laughs> you never found 13 extra bags of heroin around the house. <laughs> Bam's funny stories were scaring everybody, weren't they? <laughs> like, that was hilarious. That <laughs> yeah. was true a little bit. <laughs> and then he'd look around, he'd shit all down his leg, and it was bloody. <laughs> Uh, and then everyone said, well, let's eat it. And his, <laughs> and his mom said, you die or I die. It was so fucking funny. His mom was just standing over his grave saying, you fucking bastard. I tear your lungs out. And I never changed my baby. <laughs> I'm the or lizard king. I could do anything. One time I left my baby in the car at the Wawa. <laughs> it was really fucking edgy there for a while, man. I was really loving that. But isn't it funny, like, when you, like, like his stories are crazy, but then I told you how, like, his uncle's stories are crazy and then his dad his grandfather's stories were crazy it just goes all the way back to like the civil war <laughs> when those guys were just bayoneting each other like fuck you <laughs> i had a musket ball stuck in my nut <laughs> my gunpowder not... sacks in my yeah. asshole you gotta fish <laughs> it out steve-o i mean jebediah O. <laughs> Like, Delaware County is so fucking crazy, and I had no idea until I left there, and had no idea that people didn't have just, like, their kids fight other kids. I was like, the first time, I'm like, well, you ought to send them back out there with a stick to hit that other kid. And people are like, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> I'm like, you know, self-esteem. He's got he's to fucking let everybody at school know. Right? <laughs> That's a pretty Philly thing, too. When you go home and tell, when you get your parents involved in a fight you just had, it was yeah. rarely for, like, to tell them for anything to be in trouble. It's now to get them involved. Like, uh, look, now you got to go fight his dad, Dad. Dude, I'd see my mom coming out of the fucking house like a mad woman <laughs> at one of my neighbors one day because that guy got involved in a fight me and his kid was having. And here's the thing. They stayed mad at each other. Me and his kids started playing with each other about another 12 minutes later. <laughs> like, there's no grudge holding at all. It's just like, that fight's over. Let's fucking play Cowboys now. And your parents stayed angry. Yeah, they stayed, you know, they were adults, so they had a memory. You know what I mean? <laughs> they were like, they had a history about themselves. <laughs> but no one else ever did. Did you ever see your mom actually scrap? Well, my mom was always fucking pissed. Uh, but she was like... People would back up with her, and she was a tiny, tiny woman, but people would back the fuck off. Really? I saw my yeah. mom fight once. Yeah? A woman, we were walking home with grocery. I remember having grocery bags. Yeah. Paper ones, so we're holding from the bottom, two-hander is why I point that out. 
and a, a lunatic who lived maybe homeless, but around our area, uh, came up and said that my mom has been fucking her boyfriend and started a fight with my mom. My mom dropped the bag. She tried not to fight her, then eventually dropped the bag and did uh, hit her a few times. Nice. And then the lady yeah. backed down and fucking went away like a, like a shark you punch in the nose, I guess, or yeah. something. <laughs> and she left it. My mom, uh, and to this day, I got to be honest, my mom probably fucked that lady's boyfriend. I don't know the. Fr- I don't know for sure, but it just seemed very out of nowhere to not have anything to do with it. The lady seemed to have a reason. My mom wasn't saying you're out of your mind. She was just like, "My son's here," yeah. and then she was like, "But you fucked my boyfriend." She's like, "Come on, man, what?" And then just you know. So that's why you get upset when your team loses. <laughs> and then if I lose a game of two-on-two basketball, I'm very angry. Fuckers. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> he goes, you know we had to beat you in basketball because your mom fucked my dad. <laughs> Shut up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you get hostile is what he brought you up here to say, Chris, right? You get very hostile at sports when you would play them. Anything. Younger. If somebody says anything to him, he's fucking angry. Oh, I have a very, very uh, short temper. Like, and, but like with anything, like a major thing happens, like a death I'm fine, but the small things are when I lose my shit. Like, I could spill this bottle of water, and I'd fucking lose it. And I'd throw but, it. but if me and Jay died, you'd be fine. No, now that, that's the exception. Yeah. I love, Thank you. I love you. <laughs> I know you do. Buddy. I love you. I know you do, kid. So I make sure you know that. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm over here too, buddy. I, uh, he said if me uh, and Jay died, yeah. you really just pledged your allegiance I guess, back to Ron and I guess your cold shoulder. Yeah. I guess Chris serves two masters. <laughs> I can't lose you both. I serve but one master. <laughs> it was so formal. Yeah. Give me a hand. Well, oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, we live in medieval times. And, uh, Sire, to, yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm a, a surf. surf. Yeah. Mm, that's the only fucking surfing you'll ever do. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he surfs, surfs and turfs. <laughs> Del- delicious. Yeah. Fucking best meal. Do you play video games still? Chris? No, I don't play video games. No, no, no. Not for a long time. That's a good gauge of your anger level, too. I still get weirdly pretty pissed at video games. Well, the problem is if you play them online, like children just call you the N word a lot. Back to racism, huh, Chris? No, I'm just saying that's the problem with online video games. I'm not I, comfortable with that. I, I don't play. I don't play online. I just play, you know, in my house. They get your computer. That. Yeah, I'm in front of my machine. <laughs> what's, there's nothing to be mad about that. And I take the paddle and I play the game. Hey, I hope someone walks in here and just sees this Bam Margera in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Bam! What, what happened, dude? You were an athlete. <laughs> So tell us about you were the first one to do the loop, you say. Yep. I was the 13th person in Phoenix to do a fucking loop with clothespins in my asshole. And that was the seventh time we killed a hooker. <laughs> my dad fucked Jay's mom. <laughs> That our moms fought. <laughs> yeah. Then our moms had a big fight. Did you ever see your dad fight? Um, no, I never saw him physically fight. I saw him like verbally fight all the time. Other but, people, like talk shit. Yeah, talk shit, yeah. In front of you? Did you feel like your dad was like the man when he yes. talked shit to other people back down, you felt like? Yes. Did you ever have to see him back down? Never. That'd be crushing. Mm-mm. It would be like seeing John Wayne back down, Jay. I'm not going to lie <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize your dad was a plainsman. It was. uh, (laughs) My dad was one of the sons of Katie Elder. (laughs) Uh, McClintock, we called him. Chisholm. Nobody watches John Wayne movies. I gave you just five fucking titles. It's called Turner Classic Movies, guys. (laughs) You get on Filmstruck, and it, it teams up with Criterion. You have to attach some cosplay to it, though. Maybe a duster or... <laughs> and this, Connor! <laughs> Just had nowhere to go with that. I was going to do a mean Chris joke, and I'm, going, I'm not going to do that because he serves but one master. That's right. 
Correct. I can appreciate that. I can really appreciate that. When's the last fight you've been in, Chris? Uh, I haven't been in a fight. In the, like, I think like in the middle school is the last time I got into a fight. Because my dad would get into fights all the time. He would like get arrested for fighting. Uh, I would one time outside the Port Authority in New York City, uh, a homeless man accosted us when we took the bus back from uh, Six Flags. And um, Six oh, yeah, what? That's, when a, that's when a homeless person is supposed to laugh at you for taking a <laughs> bus to Six Flags. <laughs> Rent a car, you asshole. <laughs> And then, that was his vacation. Look at you motherfucker getting on that bus. <laughs> look at y'all. Corny ass motherfucker. What's happening? <laughs> Give me a dollar. Uh-huh. Oh, you probably ain't got one, you bus riding asshole. J- Jay, now she's leaving again. Oh, oh a look double y'all leave? turned around to see if she came back and left. So sad. And the homeless man. Oh, was- my God, you're finishing this fucking <laughs> terrible story. Yeah, it's a terrible story. <laughs> the homeless guy said, I have a knife. Give me all your money. To which my dad replied, Pull it, motherfucker, pull it. And this is in the middle of the street. And he had his dick out yeah. while he yelled at <laughs> Hard as a rock. Stab my oh. kid, I'll believe you. Stab my kid, I'll believe you. <laughs> so I wasn't big on violence being surrounded by it as a child. Oh, you didn't like violence? Uh, no, 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 no. We're an angry guy now, though. Yeah, like verbal anger, but not violence against people. All right, I'll know that if I ever feel like punching you. <laughs> That'll be good news for me. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Turning his... He turned his cheek like a Christian. <laughs> He's like a fucking sheep herder in an old western. <laughs> Chisholm, John Chisholm. The man who shot Liberty Valance. He was the... No one here has seen John Wayne movies. Chris Stanley promised when he put his guns away, he'd never pull them out again. A man of peace. I could appreciate that. I've been in a weird amount of fights. Even as an adult, an embarrassing amount. No. I've never afterwards also been like, I was pretty awesome back there. No. You never felt good about yourself. That's I've never good. walked away and been like, you know what? Nailed it. That yeah. was the, the, the last, when I punched the guy for hitting my car, I felt justified in doing it, but mm-hmm. Christine brought me back down the size after that mm-hmm. by telling me I punched a gay kid, which I'm pretty sure I didn't. I think that was just her way of keeping me in line somehow. You know what I mean? Unimpressive. You knocked out a gay kid. Then she said, my ring's outside. Why don't you try knocking me down now? This is a sad, sad story. Yeah. You gotta get weird with Philly crowds. They get touchy on uh, female abuse. It's too host to home. Too real still. <laughs> Why is he making jokes, honey? Are you not supposed to be treating me this way? <laughs> oh, the guy's fucking around. Shut up, asshole. That's, that's why I thought Rocky was a bullshit movie. Because he never smacked Adrian around <laughs> after he lost the fight. <laughs> maybe if you weren't fucking bringing me down, maybe if you fucking believed in me, just start smashing her again. <laughs> you like this? You like this thing I bought you? Bah, it's broken. <laughs> this is my house. It stinks. My house stinks. He never put his hands on Adrian. It's the most unbelievable part. <laughs> Just now there's a white, now there's a white heavyweight champion yeah. who's not even a middleweight and yeah. beats everybody up and wins belts. He gets so mad, he just fucking throws Cuff and Link against the fucking wall <laughs> as hard as he could. There's your fucking turtles. That's why Paulie was more realistic. You fucking busted! Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. It's still, even with, <laughs> even with all that Paulie did, though, they kept him around still. That's pretty. That's very that's, fucking that's Philly. Philly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Philly as fuck. He used to, <laughs> Rocky, let him, Rocky took care of him after he beat up what became his wife. Yeah. In front of him. And then gave him power of attorney for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> that was, well, you know. <laughs> Once it seemed like he had turned his life around once he had that robot. I'm oh, like, oh, yeah. it's like Elon Musk, huh, Polly? <laughs> Happy birthday, Polly. He fell in love with a robot, and it was downhill <laughs> after that. He started slacking on his household <laughs> fiduciary responsibilities. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. You're the only one that really laughed at the word fiduciary being yeah, used there. I loved it. I was so proud of you. <laughs> Rocky, while a great fighter, fiscally irresponsible. No. Did not keep an eye on the dollar and cents. Did not. Yeah. 
He's out in Russia with Pauly, who has power of attorney, <laughs> not paying attention to his scratch. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's got a robot running around in the house by itself doing God knows what. And where was Adrian during that, too? You know what I mean? Like, she could have looked over the money. I guess he should have taken her to the fucking zoo. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They love the zoo, don't they? <laughs> yeah, really. Why was she not handling that? <laughs> yeah. Keep no. an eye on it. <laughs> you think Christine is going to say, don't worry, my brother's got looking at this whole thing. No. <laughs> my drunken alcoholic brother's going to go take that over to the accountant for us. Okay. You know who fucking did that was Billy Joel. He let his brother-in-law take care of the money even after he fucking divorced the wife, and it was all missing. Yeah, Dan yeah. Cook got fucked by his brother, I think, too. Yeah, his own brother, not even a brother-in-law. You know Just what I mean? slice off some of that money off the top. Yeah. I used to get the strippers and I felt bad. What's that? <laughs> Just take I used to drive strippers to bachelor parties. Yeah. And they're supposed, it pays shit money to put yourself in pretty good danger, too. And then they're supposed to, like, well, be out By the way, no one's, thank you for your service. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> It's fine. Well, you know what? I just did what I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? I did my job. You did your job. My job just is taking care of these whores. So, so. so you would take a little money off of each one of them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like 10 bucks over the course of the night. Right. They're supposed to fucking... I'm sitting there. Listen, when they... Strippers don't give a fuck. No, that's true. And when a guy does something to them... They turn around with a real, like, keep your fucking hands off me, you piece of shit motherfucker. And then look at me like, fight this guy. And I'm like, okay, everyone, just relax. <laughs> like, there's 15 of them, idiot. <laughs> All I know is, Jay, is I believe that stripper was in love with me. And I still do to this day. <laughs> and I'm glad I paid off her mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> we got a wrap. Yeah, I know they got more pounds coming. Uh, Ronnie B, thank you for coming down here with it's me to Philadelphia, man. It's such a pleasure. Chris Stanley, I fucking love Wait, you, buddy. Thank you, you so much. Are you going to leave these guys on their own, standing up? No one else is going to join them? There we go. Oh, there. Yeah. Holy sh a standing ovation. We did it. We officially did it. Thank you, the syndicate. Chris and Matt from the syndicate. Uh, thank you guys at Laugh Button. Thank you so much. Christine, of course. Deb from the Bang. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Comic-Con. Good night.